What's the worst case of spoiled rotten that you've seen? My mom had cervical cancer a few years ago and had a full hysterectomy. She was out of work for a while and my brother and I had to work more hours and basically help out with a majority of the bills and groceries. My then girlfriend at the time couldn't seem to understand why I wasn't willing to pay hundreds of dollars on a tux and prom stuff. She proceeded to ask me every day if we were going until I finally yelled at her and told her sarcastically that I was sorry my mom had cancer and surgery to remove all of it and that I was sorry I had to help out with paying bills. She finally shut up about it and cried to her friends, literally cried at the, the school she went to but told them I just didn't want to go. She totally left out the cancer part. I only learned that the other week when one of the people she cried to got hired at my job and told me what she did. We later broke up because she cheated on me and she told everyone I hit her. I've never been in a fight in my life and I'm afraid to hit anyone because I'm a beach. I guess prom overrules helping my mom who had cancer. Edit. Thanks for all the nice replies and thoughts. Guys fat cancer. This will probably get lost, but this is one of my favorite spoiled kid co mupant stories ever. Had a friend Don who had it her kids, a year apart in age. When his son turned 16, Don was ready to give him his pristine Volkswagen. Don really babied his cars, so this Jetta, though about 7 years old, was truly in like new condition, a car that most normal 16 year olds would be thrilled to have. I would have been thrilled to have it myself. So Don tells his son the plan and his son goes dad, I'm not driving that car. It's a 7 year old Jetta. I need a new pickup truck. After taking a deep breath, so he didn't throttle his son, Don simply said well, then, I'll drive the Jetta for one more year and then give it to your sister when she's 16. If you want a new pickup truck then you'll either have to ask your mother or buy one yourself. Now Don and his kid's mother had been divorced for years and, through a series of bad choices, his ex-wife had barely two dimes to rub together. Don had gotten remarried to a woman who was a very successful and wealthy business owner. So his son, very mistakenly, thought that Don and his current wife would foot the bill for whatever the son wanted, how very wrong he was. Fast forward a year, his daughter is very happily driving the Jetta. Don bought himself a brand new Mazda. His son has access to neither of them. In desperate on, his son bought himself a crappy $800 beater just to get himself to and from work. Lesson learned, I hope. I applaud Don for sticking to his guns and teaching his kid not to be an entitled asshole at an early age. I was on my high school's newspaper staff and we always did a section on cars in the parking lot where we highlighted one shitty car and one super nice car and then interviewed both owners. Everyone loved it, and don't worry, the sheety car owners were always super excited to be a part of it, and they always had the best stories. So we picked Nabet's new Tyson cause she's got an Isis brand new Range Rover or something, and after I'm the last to call not it, I'm forced to interview her. What's your favorite feature of the car? Well one time I forgot to put it in park, and it's dead rolling away, but it didn't roll that fast so probably that. Or my g Easy bumper sticker. Got any funny stories about your car? Yeah. When my parents first got me it, I was making faces at my friend and turned left when it wasn't an arrow and totaled it. So they got me the same one again. I managed to sneak into the article. Snitison has managed to keep her car undamaged since October. It was January. In college I knew a girl whose daddy was some big shot banker or something. Made enough that the wife didn't have to work and three kids could go to expensive schools with little financial aid. This girl didn't have to work during college, had all her supplies and lodging paid for by daddy and got to fly home every time there was a three day weekend. All on her father's dime. I once had to borrow $10 from her to pay for some food when we went out to eat. I promised I would pay her back once I got my check next week. At the time I worked for a cafe and she seemed cool with it. Turns out she was not cool with it and promptly bashed me on her blog and to all her other friends calling me a bad person and a thief because I borrowed $10, which I paid her back. I brought up the blog posts and she was very embarrassed. Last I heard of her she's living in a daddy paid Manhattan apartment working part time as a receptionist at a yoga studio. 
She started a new blog about the struggle. Edit. Another instance. This was back in high school, so the details are a little fuzzy, but there were two girls. One the daughter of oil money and the other the daughter of a garbage truck corporation. They always tried to outdo each other. The oil money girl got a brand new Audi convertible when she got her license. Okay I've got one. My boyfriend's little half-sister. So her parents are real hippies, live at least 40 minutes from the nearest town, which doesn't have much anyway. They live on an eco-friendly farmland which her parents built from scratch. Since the age of say 10, she's now 16. My boyfriend's sister has been a stealer of money. Started off by taking coins when she was babysitting for neighbors eventually finding out where stashes of cash were kept and then the neighbors found out and told her parents. They were mortified but didn't do much apart from tell her off and make her promise she wouldn't do it again. Little things like that happened and same outcome. Then her granddad passed away who left a share of dollar sign one mil to her mother, which was used to upgrade the farm by more land etc. She stole money from her dead granddad's wallet in his faking pocket when he was lying in the house dead when no one was looking. All she got was a bit of a tell off. She never has to give the money back because she spends it first. Her parents just say work it off by doing chores. Now she's 16 and her latest crimes have been stealing her mum's card to buy 800 US dollars of MacUp online. Her parents took the makeup from her hoping to return it, but not before she replaced the makeup in the boxes with old bottles. They let her keep the makeup still let her do all her school camps, parties etc. The last I heard, her parents started a BNB, made a couple of grand only to have it disappear because she found out their internet banking passwords transferred it to herself, then spent it on food friends make up all in a weekend before they could find out her punishment working it off by doing chores it makes me sick i had to do chores for free i'm still doing chores for free in my own house faking hell i'm a rebel a loner i'm breaking the rules i know a multimillionaire chick maybe 95 million in net worth she's a friend of my ex-wife we hang out with her on a semi-regular basis at any rate, one day, years ago, my kid is playing some Gamma Boy DS shareable game with her sons. It's a game that my kid has. Her boys don't. They finally finish the game while the grown-ups are getting lit and eating way too much crab. One of her boys runs up to his mom and asks, can we get this game? It's really fun. She says, oh, man is tight. Tell you what, put it on your Christmas list. That's only a couple of months away, okay, okay. And, with that, all the kids went downstairs to play whatever on the whatever. I looked at her and said, "Money's is tight. She related the tale of how the kids have no idea that they have money. It was the way she was raised. She didn't discover the money until she graduated university. At first, she was pissed because her college could have been so much easier with money, but, a few months after graduation, she started thinking back on how pissed off she had been at the wealthy kids who just bought their way out of every problem that came their way, and how disgusted she had been at the way they lived their lives. She apologized to her dad and swore that she would raise her kids exactly the same way. She lives in a modest little house. Her boys wear sneakers until they destroy them. They will find out when they graduate college. I went to a very expensive private school. Personally I had a lot of scholarships going into it where I wouldn't have to pay the 50 to k a year they were humorously asking for. At the time they had very lax acceptance policy but was considered a great school which had the interesting result of attracting very rich kids who weren't interested in the school for its academics but more for its parties slash nightlife of the town slash city it was in. In my dorm freshman year there was a girl who supposedly is a descendant of the Versace, SP, family of some sort. After seeing the money she'd blown nonchalantly, I was inclined to believe it. Almost every weekend there'd be a knock on our door as she ran through the halls asking who was coming with her on her trip this weekend. She didn't mean her trip to the grocery store or even a trip home. She meant whatever trip she was planning around the world that weekend. Sometimes it was Paris, others was Australia, Bali, wherever her little heart desired. She'd fly out to these exotic places for weekends, not three-day weekends, not holiday breaks, just your average Friday slash Saturday slash Sunday. 
and she would be gobsmacked and sometimes insulted when after a moment of stunned silence, you tell her that you couldn't possibly go with her to Paris for 3 days let alone afford a last minute ticket to Paris. She literally just couldn't comprehend that normal people couldn't afford those things. Oh she also lived in the dorms because she was a freshman and you couldn't live off campus as a freshman, but she really lived off campus in what I would later find out to be a four grand a month apartment by herself with a house cleaner who'd come every day. She was the most detached from reality person I've ever met. And of course she was drop dead gorgeous. She'll probably never experience a hard time in her entire life or have to work a single day. Edit. Everyone is guessing schools. It hasn't been guessed yet, but I don't want to give the name of the school as it was a pretty small school, so it wouldn't be too hard to figure out her name or my name from it. My girlfriend's son. He's 17. Gets home from school by 1 in the afternoon and has a grand total of one chore that he has to do. Just wash the dishes. But his mom does it for him. She also has to wake him up every morning because he doesn't like to set his alarm. He also drops any trash that he has on the floor wherever he happens to be standing, which she also picks up and throws away. His personal hygiene is also completely non-existent. The only time his hands touch water is when he showers. On a related note, he doesn't rinse away his spit when he brushes his teeth so there is toothpaste spit building up in the sink on a daily basis. Outside of all that he is also the standards box player who feels tough when he includes racist names into every sentence possible. Autistic is another favorite of his. That attitude of course extends to his mother whom he calls a beach and has no problem saying fuck you to her. All in all a grade A piece of sheet. I would say that I feel bad for whoever has to deal with him when he moves out, but I know he will never do so. And he is also the reason I'm ending it with his mother. In my freshman year of college there was a kid with really rich parents. I think he was from India. Everyone hated him because he was a real braggart and wasn't making it up. So he really didn't deserve it and would never study anything and would constantly interrupt the professor to nag them over piddling sheet so the rest of us would never get any learning done. It got to the point that some of us started going to the department chairs and complaining that we couldn't be expected to pass the tests because the prof never taught us anything because they were constantly catering to this as whole. He didn't want to live in the US or go to college. He just wanted to be a rich playboy all his life, but his parents demanded he do so, so that they could brag to their friends that their son went to a college in the US. He lived on an allowance, a million dollars a month. His parents loved that he said he was taking the train, until they realized to their horror that it was a public conveyance, and he didn't own the train. They ordered him to buy a luxury sports car, and cut off his allowance, until he sent them a photo of himself with it. They bragged to their friends that he drove a luxury sports car, so their friends bought their kids one too, so they cut off his allowance again and demanded he buy another and send another picture. He whined that choosing was too much of a pain, so he called the Lamborghini dealer and said he wanted one in another color. The parents were furious when they saw he had just bought another of the same car, so they cut off his allowance again and demanded he buy a third luxury sports car of a different brand. So he bought a Ferrari. The university required everyone from out of state to move into a dorm. His parents demanded that as soon as he arrived he had to buy an apartment building and move to it. He bought one, informed everyone their leases were ending, and when they all left he moved in his friends rent free. Only, they had to brown nose him all the time. If he phoned at 2am before you had a final and said he wanted ice cream, you had to get dressed and go out in the snow and get him ice cream or he evicted your ass. He was failing all his classes and didn't care. He mysteriously got great grades on all the homework but failed all the tests. I'm pretty sure he made his friends do his homework. The professors should have turned him in for that, but no doubt the parents bought off the university. The funny thing, there was another kid in many of my classes, very humble great sense of humor, everyone loved him, and it turned out his family was much richer, only he had been raised properly. I used to work in a daycare around 1994. There was a kid, I'll sell him devil underscore child, because he was one. 
Devil underscore child was 4 or 5 and lived with his mom and grandmother and sometimes his uncle when he has out of jail every few months. Devil underscore child was an only child and could do no wrong. Mom and grandma would drive devil underscore child to school with him sitting in the front seat. They said he won't let them leave if he's in the back. If they all three go somewhere, devil underscore child sits in the front seat. They also carried him from the car to the front door because he was their baby. They would also carry him from the front door back to the car. He never walked when they were around him. Ever. One day during craft time, devil underscore child was doing something wrong in the other room teacher put her hand over his to stop him. He snatched his hand away and said, if you touch me again, I'll stab you in the head with the scissors. Sometimes I hit my grandma so hard it hurts her hand. The last story I've got about him was the time we did a neighborhood walk. Devil underscore child decided he was done with us and started running away from the group. The road we were on was very quiet, but it intersected with one of the city's busiest thoroughfares. I caught up with him and carried him back. The whole time he was scratching and kicking me. When we got back, we sat in a room by ourselves. The room had one of those half doors, so anyone could see in. He ran around knocking stuff off shelves and tipping over buckets with stuff like Legos in them. He started getting physical, so I restrained him in my lap. He managed to scratch my face and kick me in the testicles during a struggle to get him still. When mom came, I told her the story. She looked past me and the cunt said, my poor baby, come here. Are you okay? I'm guessing by now he's probably killed and buried them in the backyard, along with the others I don't know about. I'd bet he's been made into an episode of Criminal Minds too. Not something I've seen, but a story my uncle told me a while back. Around Christmas time, my uncle went to go see a performance of the Nutcracker with his girlfriend. It was a really good performance and had all sorts of neat gifts and items related to the performance itself and general things related to the show on tables in the lobby. One of those tables had authentic high quality nutcrackers made by professional woodworkers or something like that. So my uncle goes over, sees a nutcracker dressed like a role to me sea captain and is looking it over because it's really cool looking and he was considering buying it for his dad as a Christmas gift. He notices the price tag and it's way out of his range, it was a few hundred dollars I think, but he keeps on admiring it. Along comes a little girl in a Christmas dress, about 7 eighths years old. She wrenches the nutcracker out of my uncle's hands and shows it to her mom. My uncle was in complete shock at what had just happened, and at first the mom looks like she was appalled as well. But then the mom just smiles sweetly and says is that the one you want? And the girl nods and the mom buys it for her. And my uncle and the cashier just stand there in shock. TLDR little girl grabs a very expensive wooden nutcracker out of my uncle's hands while he's still looking at it, presents it to her mom, and proceeds to purchase it. Yeah I know what I already commented, but I'm gonna comment again, because I thought of another good one. I definitely don't come from money, but I grew up absolutely comfortable and content. The heat wasn't always on, but we always had food and that's all I could ever ask for. I kinda had a thing with this guy, who I knew came from money, and one weekend he introduced me to all his friends. It, it was honestly hard to watch. This group of people were renting out an airbnb which they just trashed and no one cleaned, or even blinked an eye. It was the most rampant abuse of drugs and alcohol I've ever witnessed. They laughed when I talked about playing basketball in the street, I guess it's funny, because I didn't have my own court. I told my guy that I grew up across the street from a meth lab, and he threw it out to the group as sort of a fun fact I guess, hilarious. I saw one guy shut down another's opinion by saying, I'm sorry, can you fly to Hawaii right now? Can you have a helicopter land right outside this faking house and take you to Hawaii right now? No you can't. So shut the fuck up. And I overhead one of my guy's friends say Jude is she loaded? And he goes no she's poor as fuck and the friend said whoa, that's faking sick. He even told me later well this is just really different for us, because I've only ever hooked up with heiresses. Not a car story, but still bad kid slash parents. Working in a deli in a grocery store, a mom rolls up with one of carts that have a plastic car cab attached for the kids currently populated by her two kids. They're yelling and shrieking and hanging out of the cart. 
she gives her order and turns to the kids to say in the same tone, you need to sit down. I'm not sure if the kids hear her or not, but one decided to get out and start running around. Mom interacts with the person serving her before turning around to tell the kid they need to get back in the cart. She hasn't even raised her voice yet. The kid ignores her. He runs over to a rack of dessert cakes and grabs a box. He yells over to his mother and holds the box up triumphantly. She looks over and says no. We are not buying that. She doesn't sound convinced. Seeing their sibling with a box of chocolate dessert cakes, the other child dashes over and grabs a pair of boxes of their own. Not to be outdone, abomination hash one grabs another box and they head back to the cart. Mom watches them come back over and says, in that same defeated voice, I said no. You have to put them back. The kids respond by slam dunking the boxes into the cart proudly, happy at their success. Mom looks at the whole situation and finally decides to lay down an ultimatum. I don't know. She muses, are you going to eat those? The kids scream triumphantly in the affirmative and mom relents, walking off with the kids and their snack cakes. Well, this is probably just poor person sour grapes, but I've got a cousin who has doctor parents. He too is studying to be a doctor and he married a fellow medical student who came from a family of doctors and who I'm guessing is also going to be a doctor herself. Now a doctor is a noble profession. They earn their wages through the difficulty, stress, and making life or death decisions. Anyways, it was a huge wedding. Live music. A band that followed the couple everywhere. Magical and romantic. The women in my family especially seemed to loved it, so I guess that means it was a success. The part that got me though, was the reception. I sat at the Paris France table with my sister and parents. It had a statue of the Eiffel Tower in the center. I peered over at the other tables. A Spanish bull statue for Spain. Leaning tower for Italy, paraphernalia for Russia, Australia, Ukraine, Japan, China, and seemingly 50 other countries for the 50 other tables. When I asked my sister, I discovered the tables were named after all the countries the couples was going to visit for their 6 month long honeymoon. As a $30,000 a year man, regularly giving away half his paycheck to pay down student loans, I'd rank rather quietly after that. That and the bride's friends seemed rather bratty, making 10 minute bridal speeches about boat rides, and inside humor that no one else knew what was what. I want to give an example of the complete opposite of spoil and rotten, because my sister told me that story a few days ago, and thought it was cute. My sister and brother-in-law have raised their little girl to always say politely thank you when she receives a gift and never comment negatively, even if the gift is rubbish. So the other day they were in the supermarket and there was a small competition in one side of the shop. It was just to align names of fish with the correct fish. So she did it, my sister was reading the names for her, and my niece was lining the fish's pictures next to the names, she's 5. She won, so she received a little box, and she was very excited. So she opened it, she had received. A lemon. A faking lemon. So as the polite little girl she was she politely said thank you, but my sister told me that she could see that what the fuck? Comment in her eyes. She was solidly disappointed. Then after they left she asked to my sister I don't want to be rude, but is that a normal gift you think? My sister laughed and said no it's not. So because she was so nice and polite about all this, my sister bought her some fancy cereals for the next day with a vey and a gift inside of the box to make it up to her. That lemon was a really bad gift. But I thought it was just the anti-spoiled rotten moment of the year, and I thought it belonged here. To give some comparison point please note, it was a bad gift, but a great marketing plan. Without that incident, my sister would have never bought the expensive cereals. Wow. This thread has me so mad. My family and I grew up just above poverty, not by much, any type of available government assistance we were on, except housing. My parents bought the house from my great grandmother. I didn't get my first cell phone until I was 19, and it was a cheap as flip phone. Didn't get my license until I was 19, and got my first car at 20. My dad was nice enough to drop $600 of his income taxes on a 1997 Chevy Cavalier for me. Even now, at almost 30, I'm struggling. My money goes towards bills and my son 
In 2015, I was able to buy a used Chevy Impala, which I will finally be done paying off November of 2018. I feel so guilty spending my money on myself, especially my taxes. There are days I don't eat so that my son can, which is problematic since I'm 9 weeks pregnant. I wish I had money to blow like the people mentioned in this thread. I wish I could cover my expenses and not have to worry about going into the negative. This thread makes me so thankful for my parents. They tried so hard to make sure we had everything we needed and tried to make sure we got what we wanted for Christmas. It got to the point to where I wouldn't ask for anything for my birthday and Christmas, so my parents wouldn't go into debt. I will never be able to afford a brand spanking new car. Hell, I was as giddy as a schoolgirl when I got my Impala because I have never had a car that had power locks slash windows. It is only a 2000, but I felt like I was queen of the world when I drove it off the lot. I'm sorry that this made no actual contributions to this thread but fact, I wish some people knew how faking lucky they are when it comes to this type of situation. I met this girl in the first couple of weeks in college, and she seemed pretty nice, and so we became friends. As we became friends she told how she didn't really grow up in the best house. She said her house was run down and not really well kept. She also said that she never felt loved by her parents and that they never did anything for her. Fast forward a month she invites me and some friends to go stay at her place down in Cape Cod. As we're going down there we all expect to see some small beach shack that some people usually have for vacation homes. Nope. She has a faking mansion. She has three buildings on her property, the main house, the garage, and the guest house, all of which were at least three stories high, not to mention the pool that was attached to the guest house. I ended up asking her what she meant when she told me the place was run down and not well kept. Her response the cleaners and landscapers do a terrible job on the place. I also come to find out that her parents are some of the nicest people on the planet. They even got her an Audi A4 for her 17th birthday and she refused to take it because she wanted a better model. I ended up dropping her as a friend, but I wish I hadn't because I want to stay at her house during the summer. Everyone here is talking about spoiled humans. I have a story about a spoiled cat. This will get buried, but why not? When I was younger, a cat showed up on the roof one day. We figured she would get down but she didn't and kept crying. So dad got a ladder and got the cat off the roof. She was about 6 months old, a grey tabby. Her belly had been recently shaved, she had just gotten fixed. She didn't belong to anyone in the neighborhood. This was in the early 1990s and there was no internet to post to her. She was a nice girl and we decided to keep her. She preferred to live outside and would only get on a lap now and then, though she liked to be petted and was always friendly. 10 years later, that all changed. She wanted to be inside the house and you practically had to peel her off your lap. We love our pets, so she was very welcome to be inside. We also spoil our pets, and she was no exception. Plenty of treats, plenty of toys, lots of attention. The cat's favorite thing was a heated basket. A wicker basket from Target with a heating pad inside, under a bath towel. Now, the towel was key. This cat would not accept a used towel. Nope. She needed to have a fresh towel every day. She would get into her basket and sniff the towel. If it wasn't a new towel, she would give you a dirty look and refuse to stay in the basket. We tested this a number of times too. She would occasionally accept the towel if you flipped it over, but you had to pull the towel out, fluff it up, then put it back. She would get upset if you flipped it over and the used side was up. We also tried putting a previously used towel in the basket. Nope. That didn't work for her. It had to be a fresh towel. Fortunately, we had a number of old bath towels and we'd buy her a new towel if we found one on clearance. Every week, we'd wash her towel so there was a fresh one for her to sleep on every night. Yep, we did regular laundry for the cat, which we laughed about. We really loved her, and she was a very good girl. She never caused any trouble around the house and was super affectionate. She lived like that for almost 7 years, then cancer got her. It was tough, and I still miss her all these years later. Though we have plenty of other spoiled cats, she was the most spoiled. Oh, and one more quick story about her. 
she actually pouted and sulked when she didn't get her way. Usually that was kicking her off your lap before she was ready to get up. She sulked in a very unusual way. She would sit down on the floor with her back to you and her tail pointing directly at you. You could go up behind her and she would refuse to look at you or even swivel her ears back to listen. No. She would sit there and pout. Oh. Finally something I can contribute something meaningful to while also venting. For absolutely certain, my niece. She was given everything she wanted since she was about 5 years old. She would throw a tantrum and she would be given her way so that she would stop throwing her tantrum. All this did was teach her, if you want to get your way, throw a tantrum. Now, at 17 years old, she throws some horrific tantrums. Like, she has had the cops called on her dozens of times. She is currently being forced to move to New York because the apartment complex she was living in is evicting her and my father, her guardian, because of the constant noise complaints. And what did he do during these noise complaints when she's screaming bloody murder because she wants $10 to buy some wed? He gives her the $10 every time because he wants to avoid the noise complaints. I get it for him at this point. He's in his 60s, didn't expect her loser mother to still be a junkie loser who's once again in jail, and he thought he'd be done, but it doesn't excuse rewarding bad behavior when she was 7 to 14, when she somehow learned threatening suicide helps her chances. I tried telling him years ago after my sister lost custody of her kids that he was positively reinforcing her bad behavior by giving her what she wanted, and he didn't listen. I admit I'm to blame too, while I never reinforced her behavior which made her up the ante to try physical violence, threatening to hurt herself, et, see I didn't give in to it, but I also didn't know how to deal with it. Also, not being her guardian I couldn't just throw her in therapy and on meds where she belonged. Now I fear she's going to escalate from wed to harder drugs and wind up in jail, because she never learned you can't always get what you want. I know one thing, if I ever have kids, which because of her I don't want any, but if I did, they will never turn out like that. I would sacrifice my own happiness to give them some structure, which is a major contributor to bad behavior, no structure that is, and consequences. You don't need to beat your kids, make them do work around the house. They are punished and they see that their bad behavior can be fixed by reversing the effects with some work. I truly believe putting kids to work is the only form of punishment that works. Time out is good for smaller kids. I have several stories of my sister who is 24 years old. Most of these stories take place when she was younger. First instance happened when it was her birthday. This was when Apple introduced the iPad. She had to have one. My parents who work very hard couldn't really afford the hefty price tag. So when her birthday came around and she found out she wasn't getting the iPod she lost her sheet. Locked herself in her room and trashed it. Punched walls yada yada. When my sister was old enough to drive a car my parents bought her a Chevy Malibu. It was an old lady's car so it had like 20 miles on it. When it came time for me to drive I was told that I had to pay for my own car and insurance that went along. While still in high school you know with that full time job I needed to get. My parents treat my sister so much differently than me. My mom would always tell me oh you need to go to college or you'll be working at McDonald's asking people if they want fries with that. So I went to college and got an associate's degree. So when it came time for my sister to graduate high school and attend college my parents didn't pressure her. Not one bit. Where do you think she ended up? Burger King. Yup. Oh my parents would praise her for working there and how hard she worked. Meanwhile, I was laid off from my job at the county courthouse. My fault was how they made it look. My sister attend community college for maybe like 5 months before she said I can't do it anymore it's too hard. Had I said that oh man I would have been kicked to the curb. But no they didn't give her any sort of look or punishment for dropping out. My parents would do anything for my sister. Since she was the youngest she got whatever she wanted. Me, not so much. I was told that I had to work for stuff that I wanted. Which I did. My parents told me while in high school I needed to get work full time. I was a senior in high school told to get a full time job. I worked every day after school until 9pm and on weekends. I made like nothing too. 
Back then minimum wage was I believe $5.25. Sucked so bad. Anyway when my sister was in high school they never told her she needed to get a job they just did everything for her. Bought her whatever she wanted. If she didn't get it, she would punch walls and trash the house. I remember one time she punched my mom in the face over something I can't remember. Fast forward to now. My husband and I had our first child. We had a little girl. We asked my sister, who was not working at the time, to watch her for us, and we would pay her. She would watch her yap, but proceeded to sit on our couch all day and watch TV. We have nanny cams. Anyway, when it would come close to payday she would ask us to pay her immediately, or she wasn't watching our child. She would say the most absurd and rude things imaginable. Things like I'm the one here all day watching your kid while you work, or I'm not a daycare I'm just here to watch her, so I don't have to do anything. There would be days, and I sheet you not where she wowed and feed my daughter her lunch, and I had to tell her to do it. And when I would ask she would say things like oh she isn't hungry or rided. Keep in mind we had a nanny cam, so I could see her. This was the last straw we had with her. The morning she was due to watch our daughter she comes into our house all pissed off. She proceeds to tell my husband that she works all week and doesn't have time to herself. She sits on the couch all damn day watching TV. My husband then asks her to leave our home and she storms out and slams our door right in front of my daughter. We haven't talked to her since. Oh one last thing. My sister managed to rake up $5k in credit card debt. Buying stupid sheet. Things like Legos, Disney this and Disney that. She lives with her boyfriend too. So who do you think pays for all her bills? He does. Uh Aha. Granted she does work now. First full time job in her damn life. She makes him buy her stupid sheet off Amazon all the time. Since it's Girl Scout cookie season she made him buy her 4 boxes of Thin Mints. My sister being the fat youth she is probably ate them all already. Sorry for it being so long. For my son's third birthday party my sister and her daughter met us in a centrally located city. As my son proceeds to open his gifts, my niece is going literally nuts over what he's getting. He opens up a gift we bought for him. A leapfrog gaming system. My son is the most generous little human I know. He lets her open the toy and gives her first turn and she does not want to give it back to him. She has a death grip on it and my son is like WTF. My sister just thinks it's cute and funny. Me, I'm fuming on the inside. While all of this is happening, my mother and other sister disappear. They show up 30 minutes later with something wrapped up. I thought oh that's nice another present for my son. Nope it was a brand new leapfrog for my niece. Right when she sees the gift she throws down my boy's leapfrog to the floor and snap. It's breaks. Now my boy is in tears and she is happy as a clam opening. Yet another gift on my son's birthday. And does she give him any turns on her new toy? Not one turn. Two hours later, and another $125 down the drain I return with another one. My mom feels bad and tries to pay me for the new one. And I was so mad I told her to save it, because she's gonna need it for future granddaughter expenses. That was 7 years ago, and to this day I'm still pissed about that incident. Fast forward to last summer and we go on a vacation with same sister and her family. We head to the local Canadian Tire to get some supplies for a float down the local channel. Sister's middle child tags along with his friend. We do our thing and head to the cash register. I throw our things on the counter and all of a sudden a football, two sets of goggles, and two ridiculously expensive water guns Mr. Real C end up in our pile. I tell my nephew I'm not paying for all of this stuff. And he throws a tantrum in the store telling me not to be so cheap, and that his other uncles would have paid for that crap. We get back to our rental, and he blasts me again in front of his mom and dad. Now brother-in-law, thinks I'm am the worst uncle ever. And my sister laughs it off, as if it was cute once again. I'm so late to this party, but my brother qualifies for this post. He calls my widowed mother daily to keep tabs on her and constantly gets her to pay for everything. She lives on a fixed income, but he got her to buy him a new Camaro because her credit is good, then made her pay for payments and insurance. Then he brought her married, not to him, woman and her kids to Thanksgiving and made her host them at her house where they stayed up all night, 
keeping my mom up, then slept till 2 p.m. every day and kept my mom from spending time w her actual grandkids because she had to wait on them hand and foot. When they finally left her house to join the family at the house where Thanksgiving dinner was being held, they demanded my husband fix her broken laptop, no please or thank you, then dumped the kids we didn't even know and went off on their own. And apparently leftovers were too good for them because they insisted on eating at an expensive buffet the next day for dinner and walked out of the restaurant come bill time and left my mom to pay the $75 bill for him, ho, and three kids. When I confronted him about it, he acted like I was being an asshole because he was broke and hungry. The cherry on top is that they made the girlfriend's husband bring the kids to my other brother's house for Thanksgiving because they didn't fit in his Camaro. So my other brother was, was worried the husband was going to have a psychotic break and come to his house and shoot us because of this sheet. My mom insisted if we acted like this wasn't totally normal we would ruin the holidays. He's in his mid 30s. This is just a taste of the insanity my mom supports. A girl in my school made her first motorcycle lesson with 16. EU so this is normal. Tells us that it was really cool cause her dad just gave her everything. I'm talking 2000 euros in clothing for summer, 2000 euros in clothing for winter, one 500 euro helmet and another 600 euro helmet for whatever reason. He also got her a brand new motorcycle for 7000 euros. We are talking about someone who just started riding and who didn't know if she'd like it or not. Naturally for these people, the motorcycle is way too high for her causing her to tip over all the time and she can't even stand while sitting on the bike. She can't lift it either when she tips over. I don't really care about the last part, but it's noteworthy since everyone complains about not being able to lift their bike or scooter, which is honestly sad cause I got a bike that weighs double their weighs and I can lift it. At first I thought that it's because I'm a man and they're women, but then they tell me that they work out 5 times a week while I'm working an office job, sitting in school and playing video games. Anyways, back to story. She was always tipping causing a total of 3000 euros in damages, which were paid by her father. As a bright idea she wanted to lower the seat, which cost her an additional 1000 euros, paid by her father. She was still too small for the bike but only occasionally tipped over. Damages were and probably are still always paid by her father. There are motorcycles, just as good as hers that are lower, but I guess, since her father bought it there can be some mismatches. At least she owned up to it, right? Well, a few months go by, and we are drinking with the cool kids, which all don't really like her since she's really. She always tries to talk, both in class and everywhere else, and is incredible dense to other people's reactions, although she always says she has so much empathy. Anyways, we were drinking, and I guess she wanted to impress them, so she told them that she bought all the stuff from her own money. I'm somewhat confused, but too drunk to care. So someone asks her where she got all the money, and the following takes place. She, well, naturally I worked for it someone, really? How long? How did you manage to earn that much? She, I started half a year ago with a part time job I don't know about the US, but if you're that age, 15, and working part time you can earn a maximum of 400 euro month. Adding that up over half a year it'd be 2400 euros. Something doesn't match, right? I estimate she told me the costs, the total costs to be around 16,000 euros. If you get a decent full time job you get around 3000 euro month, so 18,000 euros for 6 months. However, at the age of 15 she also skipped a year which should caused her to have to learn a lot during her free time, unless she's a genius or something. Judging from the talks we had, she doesn't seem like a genius though. Maybe not perfectly fitting but a noteworthy story I think. My example won't involve any cars, or boarding schools etc and the reason is I'm not old enough to drive, or even go to high school, I'm an 8th grade, but my example will be about my best friend, and will involve a bit of a story starting at the summer of 2015, when I was going to my neighbor's house, to help them with putting a new roof on their house, so I could earn money. To let me get a gaming PC, after 20 plus hours of moving shingles etc. 
I and dollar sign 100 for my computer now fast forwarding to Christmas of 2015 my best friend gets a $800 gaming laptop for Christmas along with dollar sign 150 plus of steam money to buy games for the laptop. Then in February I bought my computer and loved it because I saved up for it over almost a year. He starts then bragging about how his laptop that was given to him on a silver platter with a couple hundred dollars to spend on it is better than my computer. If you really look at it, they are very similar in performance, but he lied about the specs of his laptop to make it look better. Fast forward to late November last year I had saved all my money to upgrade my computer and bought a new graphics card for it, where he also makes fun of that new graphics card calling it a fire hazard, even though it runs at safe temperatures fats forward to Christmas 2016 where my friend gets her HTC Vive, $800, along with a new computer, $600 plus, and about $150, to add to his Steam library. He still makes fun of my inferior computer. A few other things to point out about my friend are that he also in February he got the game Fallout 4, $60, for about one month of good grades, and got No Man's Sky, $60, on launch day, because he mowed the lawn, and he broke his ankle in October to November, and got about $50 of more Steam money, and he still is recovering, and still might be until the end of the year. So he can't go to PE and got a wheelchair instead of crutches because he can't walk with crutches. I will update this if I think of anything else. Edit. I click submit and the thing went down and I realized I accidentally wrote a short story complaining about my friend. My ex-husband who I supported for 11 of the 13 years we were married. He was an opera singer and would frequently travel around the country for pointless auditions that in retrospect he would have no chance of getting. I paid off his student debt, which he never used to find work, put him through his last year of college, paid all the bills, did all the financials and budgeting, and was relatively cheery about it at first thinking that part of a partnership is you trade off certain time so both people can work toward their goals. This is how would flinch and go bananas if anything remotely critical was said to him and respond to simple requests to clean around the house by saying oh, so you just think I'm your slave? He left me for another guy, gay, OBV, literally three months after I nursed him back to full strength from having a triple spinal fusion for a guy nearly 20 years his junior who works at Old Navy and runs a YouTube channel about his doll collecting hobby. After the few months of dealing with the divorce, it dawned on me that even after 13 years I still dodged a bullet because I might be with that as whole if he hadn't. He started delivering pizzas and for Amazon in the mornings and on one hand I am so happy reality has finally set in on what it takes to pay the bills but on the other hand I'm pretty exasperated he couldn't have made half the effort he does now when we were still together. On the plus side, I'm still on very good terms with my in-laws, which include six combined nephews and nieces. They are all upset at him for leaving, as well as refusing to drive his own damn mother to doctor's appointments when he wasn't working using the excuse of well, I need to go to the gym our gym is 24 hour fitness because he got upset that one of the times he took her a 90 minute appointment ended up taking 3 hours and he didn't like losing his day. For his mother, one of the sweetest ladies I have ever met, who had stomach ulcers so bad she couldn't eat without pain and diarrhea, she's doing better now thankfully. Anyway, fuck that guy. Kid's mom was a teacher and a notorious helicopter parent. Kid's mom got a job teaching at the kid's school just so she could be even more of a helicopter parent. Very sheltering, wants to protect her son from pretty much anything negative. Also super religious and strict about odd things. For instance, up until 5th grade, he was only allowed to watch Veggie Tales. An entire school year passes seemingly without incident. The kid is very weird, though I don't really blame the kid for that. His mom's parenting would turn any kid into an autistic brat with no social awareness, but nothing is too out of the ordinary. He doesn't make many friends, but that's simply because he's an annoying twat. Other kids prefer to make fun of him instead of putting up with him. Halfway through the next school year, the kid gets bullied. While being bullied, he goes stop, or I'll have my mom fail you. 
Apparently she's been surreptitiously tampering with students' grades whenever her son says he doesn't like someone. This went on for a year and a half before the son accidentally outed the entire thing with his offhand comment. School did an investigation, realized it was legit, canned her, and brought in a long-term sub for the rest of the school year. I guess the silver lining is that the sub was loved by the students and later got hired as the full-time teacher. But for an entire school year, kids had their grades faked with whenever the son cried to mommy. She couldn't find a teaching job after that. One kid, who I've known for a long time now, has been entitled to almost everything. We used to be friends, but it started falling apart when one day he asked me why I was so spoiled. I looked around in absolute shock, as he had his own computer, owns bucks, and had just received three grand to redo his room. I didn't even get a laptop until a year after. That was just the start. As for his birthday about two months later, he gets a DS, with a couple of games, a new speaker system for his desktop computer, some Xbox games, $200 of iTunes gift cards, and some Amazon gift cards. I don't remember what he spent the gift cards on, but probably something like expensive Gordian bad quality headphones, Beats maybe. Fast forward to now, about 8 years later, and his the car he is driving now is a Mercedes G500, with all the optional extras, a rich mom car, but still a very nice car. He also wanted to get into PC gaming, as most of his friends are leaving console, so his parents gave him another 3 grand for a PC. So a top of the line custom build PC is now his, including liquid cooling. Now, I won't lie, I have a very similar computer, a gaming PC with liquid cooled components, but I got myself a job, and all the money I've spent on it has been the money I worked for. After his friends found parts, and built the entire thing for him, he uses it for year average shoot him up games, almost exactly what he played on Zbox. And it doesn't stop, he's always buying new stuff, that is either gaudy, expensive, and usually both. Last year he got two gold and diamond rings for doing well in high school football, one ring per season. Apparently he's also spending more on his PC by getting a 2 grand 4K monitor, for reasons totally unknown. Maybe born in 4K. I'm just waiting for the day he asks the same question that ruined our friendship, why are you so spoiled? Current rumored. She's trying to train her dog to use puppy pads because it's too cold to take it out and the stairs mixed with the temperature difference aggravates her asthma. She must have tried this before since she isn't actually training the dog but it goes on the pads sometimes. Our building has one handicap accessible apartment, the rest are upstairs and she's trying to get the current tenant moved so she can have it because of her asthma. She's also having her mom try to get her a handicap parking permit, but so far she doesn't qualify. She keeps calling her mom about this group of kids who smoke in the stairwell, and how a bunch of people smoke pot. Her mom keeps filing complaints to the landlord who then updated security cameras, and gave the police keys to the property, so they could patrol. They don't because it's stupid but still. Problem is, my roommate smokes constantly. She is literally always high. She smokes several bowls a day. When she wakes up, when she gets back from class, before work, after work, and before bed. So she's faking with her asthma, and if anything is going to happen from her mom complaining, it's gonna be that she gets arrested. My cousin's ex-boyfriend's little sister. Technically I knew her too but only cause they grew up together. They came from an upper middle class family that spent way too much money. Dad liked to talk sheet about how his son was smarter than my cousin's older sister and was going to become a better doctor than her. She had fought through her family's poor years to go to school and paid her own way through college. Graduated as a surgeon a few years ago. This boy dropped out of school after taking the tuition money from his parents to live off of for 3 years. My cousin's not sure he was ever actually enrolled or just lied to her too. Anyways, so his sister... At some point I had her on Twitter, and she said something about another girl in her high school getting the same Tiffany ring she got from her boyfriend, made some snide remark about being copied, and hashtag direct tweet. Me, being a smart as, responded with yeah I think, direct tweet involves directly tweeting at someone. Probably the least offensive thing I could point out. 
Q total meltdown. She went on a Twitter tirade, ending with her deleting it I think, cried to her whole family about my cousin, who did nothing, and I bullying her, and had her parents call up my cousin, and tell her to stop. Over 24 hours after the incident she was still being harassed from this family for an apology. I repeat, she did nothing. Apparently I ran into her mother two years ago. As my cousin put it even if I wasn't bad with faces she's had so much plastic surgery done, I had no chance of recognizing her. Back when I was about to join the military and go to college it was pretty clear I was going to need a car. So I was gifted this old car from my step-grandparents. Hey whatever sure it's sat there for decades, but at least it's free. Used it, never crashed it. My step bro, that was my age got my step mom's truck and my dad went and got my younger step bro a used car. The younger one didn't want it, he wanted a newer one. So he got a semi new truck. Not long after he crashes it, gets another one drowns it while mudding, the list goes faking on. Older one keeps rear ending like poles and his friend crashed it one spring break. My car's transmission gave out along with its computer after a year of owning it. It was a really old poorly kept car. So after an incident it just turned off on me in the middle of driving it was apparent I needed a new car before it killed me. Dad insisted on helping pay for the new car cause it was my birthday present which was helpful, but just one problem. Every step of the way my stepmom fought us, I didn't need a new car apparently. She insisted we didn't have the money to help me pay for a new car while she threw new ones at the younger one. I did the down payment and my dad still paid the rest thinking it was bullshit. Another year later my dad apologized to me and took me off the insurance, sure whatever I'm a big kid. I still haven't crashed my car, yet my older stepbrother was kicking the insurance bill sky high. My dad again fought with my stepmom and cut him off the insurance. His reason? If my kid who hasn't crashed her car and paid a large chunk of it herself is off the insurance, then your son can suck it up and take care of his problems cause that car was free to him. Summary, stepbrothers can crash all the cars they want, but heaven forbid I need one cause it gave out on its own. I went to a private school from K8. This one girl, let's call her Mini, went there until 4th grade Aish. She was the queen of beachy, stuck up, spoiled as holes. I know that is mean to say about a kid, but seriously, she was the worst. She would torture every single classmate, about 40 kids in my grade, until they would cry. On multiple occasions we would try and tell the faculty, but her mom would always come in and say how her perfect daughter was actually the one being bullied. This little cunt would make even the guys cry. Like not a tear, straight up bawling. She was especially mean to this one girl, who was her mortal enemy, even though she did nothing to deserve this title. Well one day the one girl got sick of Meanie, and opened a fruit cup, peaches if you are wondering, and threw it all over Meanie. It was funny cause it was, when we were young enough, that girls didn't wear bras yet, and we all wore plain white polos. Well needless to say, Mina's pokers were visible, and she cried for like a month about it, this was in like second grade I believe. As you can see, she was not well liked, because she was just mean to everyone. It was a viscous cycle of her tormenting everyone, and then everyone would hate her, making her torment and so on. Around 3rd 4th grade, her parents pulled her out, and put her in public school, cause she was tired of her child being bullied every day. I don't hear anything about her till a few years later. Apparently she pulled the whole Queen Beach routine in our public school, which was partially ghetto, and people weren't having it. She was bullied and super bullied because of how she treated others, and her mom was still trying to fight the argument that her daughter was perfect. After a few months, guess who goes on Dr. Phil? Meanie and her mommy, also Mina's sister I believe. After that, they tried to sue our township for some crazy amount like 1 to 2 million dollars for emotional damages. They lost the lawsuit, and I haven't heard anything from them since. I'm not saying this girl deserved any type of bullying, and maybe I don't know the whole story, but she was really cruel to everyone. To me it seems like her mom needed to realize that if her daughter encounters a bully one day, then that person is a bully. If her daughter is bullied by everyone, then maybe her daughter is the bully. Yes I just quoted that as whole saying. 
My ex's son, 12, always seemed to get his own way. It probably didn't help that his dad, my ex, who had shared custody with his ex-wife, said to me, when we first were living together this is the fun house for my kids. I moved in, and his son never did any type of housework. It was always about him spending time on his Xbox, PlayStation, DS, Wii or iPod. This kid never wanted to play outside, read a book or even play with his cousins when they came over. I took on the stepmom role, but I had instructions from my ex that I wasn't allowed to discipline his kids. He also had a daughter who was a complete angel. Moving forward it's getting close to Christmas and it's also the son's birthday in December. I had presents that were very well hidden, and one night his dad caught him snooping for them. Yes, he found his Christmas and birthday presents, and I was ropeable. My ex tells me that I was allowed to give him a punishment. Whoa. I gave him an ultimatum, I would get his birthday present and main Christmas present, and he would choose which one he takes to the Salvation Army, or he has to load and unload the dishwasher for 3 months, and if he so much as rolls his eyes, or moans about doing it, I add a whole week on to the end. Well, I'm sure you can guess which one he chose, and the dishwasher thing. It continued on for nearly 6 months. He actually thought I would give in, and in that his dad was supportive of my rules. Don't take me on you little sheet, I grew up without the nice things you have, and believe me son, I know what punishments hurt the most. As I write this, my girlfriend is asleep, and I'm up awake at 2am, I've arrived late to the thread. I hope that by answering this question it's therapeutic to my situation. I'm the middle child, my oldest brother is 15 years older than me, the next one in line is my sister at 3 years older than me. They are named N and S respectively. I also have a younger sister and two younger brothers. My younger sister isn't relevant to the story. The younger brothers are M, the older of the two at 7 years younger and J being a whopping 9 years younger. My father was quite prolific. The spoiled brat is my younger, but not youngest brother. MM suffers from bipolar disorder, much like his mother, my stepmom. It has become the excuse she has used to excuse his behavior. These are real situations that have actually happened. He does what I call talking at people and is a regular conversational rapist. What I mean by this is, if you are speaking with him the entire conversation must revolve around him or his interests. As soon as you try to change subjects to anything else he'll actually say, to which I've heard a hundred times. Oh I'm not really interested in that. He'll then proceed to change the conversation to whatever pleases him. His entitlement level is through the roof. When he was young he demanded everything from my stepmother, his biological mother. As any child would he tested his limits. He wanted this toy or that gadget. I remember being forced to eat at McDonald's for two years because all he would agree to eat was french fries. It was one of the reasons I taught myself to cook. I got so sick of fast food. He would break things with no thought. If he wanted a new toy slash game slash anything he'd simply smash the old one to bits and tell his mother to purchase him a new one or he'd scream until he got what he wanted. This has not changed. At the time of typing he is 17 years old and he still screams, throws tantrums and screeches to get what he wants. This is a fueled and dysfunctional relationship he has with his mother. He's beaten her multiple times thrown a mason jar at her head, attempted a false suicide attempt to guilt her into letting him stay home from school permanently and be homeschooled, and regular threats to beat the sheet out of my father and other members of my family. Every moment I tried to step in, every time I tried to warn my family of what they are turning him into has led to them blaming me for being a bully, for being cruel to him, because he has a mental illness and I couldn't possibly understand his pain. His bipolar is not extreme, and I've been diagnosed with depression. I don't wear it as a badge of honor, yet I instead think it was a scar of the constant battling, the beatings I took emotionally from my parents as they told me I was the issue, that I was the one tearing the family apart, while he screamed and hit them. I'm 23 years old and the only way I've been able to deal with it is by distancing myself, yet he grows more and more violent. I don't know what to do, but I do know that he is the most spoiled and rotten thing I've ever been in contact with, as he smirks while hurting cats and screams at my father for twisting his ankle and being unable to help him set up his bed he ordered. I've never seen something so self-centered. The most spoiled person I know is my mother. 
she was raised by my grandparents, the two best people in the world. My grandfather was an entrepreneur owning two bars in downtown Miami in the 50s and then eventually a real estate company and title company from the 70s 2000s my mother had car after car purchased for her crashing each one and getting them replaced for her. Was sent to college with everything paid for, rent in an apartment, paid for because she didn't want to live on campus. Earned a bachelor's in education and promptly decided she hated kids. So she became a secretary, but still refused to work for the family company leaving her older sister, my aunt to work for, and inherit the companies. My parents divorced, and I guess because of that I grew up poor in every sense of the word with most of her expendable income being spent on her for vacations with friends and other things. But anything she cried for or wanted, she got. When VCRs first came out they cost almost $1000, she got one, before anyone else did new tv mom got one she would call my aunt and my grandmother complaining that she was moving into a one bedroom apartment when my aunt asked well you're giving pretty for an alien the bedroom right no i'm a grown woman and i need my privacy she answered her needless to say they paid the remainder of our rent so i could get my own room to this day she makes the worst decisions and makes my aunt and i insane she bought a house in cash from inheritance left for her by my grandma Quit her job and took mortgage after mortgage out against the house and eventually sold while she was upside down because she just felt like moving to be close to friends. She never picks up a check, refuses to buy anything for herself and continues to depend on us for everything else all the while complaining that her sister is mean to her. She took her retirement two years early and bragged she could live off her social security and travel the world with friends, but now can barely make ends meet and hates all the women she moved to be near. Because she took social security early there's a 30% penalty and she can only work 12 to 14 hours a week. How does she spend those hours? Working for free at a thrift store and refuses to get a paid job. I've spent my life in essence parenting her and coddling her and cleaning up her messes completely paralyzed myself and my life and I'm now in a state of arrested development because of it. I'm a hard working fiercely independent woman but suffer because of her. I finally had to decide not to concern myself with her or support her or her terrible decisions and to live my life and raise my child and take pride to be nothing like her. Woo that felt goo. Let me explain the most spoiled brat I've ever met. My girlfriend babysits for a very wealthy family that has three little girls and a stay-at-home mom. I occasionally help out from time to time. So my girlfriend and the mom text each other to schedule times when she's needed. The only problem is that the mom is so irresponsible that the only way she schedules is on the spot. Like she'll literally have my girlfriend clear her schedule all day just to wait for a text that says, Okay I need you now. My girlfriend usually spends around 6 to 10 hours a day, 4 to 5 times a week with this family. What's worse? Sometimes the mom will be home when my girlfriend is there. For example, my girlfriend will get up early in the morning to go to this family's house, feed the kids breakfast after they wake up and take them to school. Where's mom? In bed, sleeping. What's even worse? The nights where my girlfriend stays until 12 to 1 am, or even sometimes overnight, putting kids to bed and doing chores, the mom is out gambling the household's income, and we know this because she loves to boast about how much she wins, which is rare. What's even more worse? In the final weeks that my girlfriend worked for this family, she asked the mom to set up a true schedule, so she wasn't waiting around all day for texts. The mom agreed to set up a true schedule, but never actually did anything about it. So in my gfs last week she explained that she wouldn't babysit anymore at the end of the week and the mom reacted by texting my girlfriend that she's been found under the bus and she's struggling to find a new sitter. It was just an unbelievable experience of how a mother of three could act so irresponsible. Notes. My girlfriend and I are 18, mom is like 35. The compensation my girlfriend got for babysitting was big, but not enough to deal with the mom. Oh, and the mom's father, who's like 60 something, also lives in the same house. He has no job and doesn't take of anyone or anything. It's mind blowing. Not really sure if this counts as spoiled or not. 
Stories and advice from anyone else in a similar situation would be helpful. I still have no idea how to deal with this. My brother currently lives at our family home with his girlfriend. They they live at the family home alone as my dad died a few years back and mum's living with my stepdad. They pay very little in rent, enough to pay for about one half of the bills. It's certainly a lot less than any other place they could find. She jumps from retail job to retail job. She's gone through five in the last two years, complaining that the people around her are always horrible. She usually calls in sick at least once per week, sometimes more often. He dropped out of college after not attending, and she couldn't get into one. She had a rough childhood and has anger issues. Punched a wall in our home one time after getting into an argument with my other sister. I moved out for college not long after that. She's in the same work situation as him. Despite this, in the last year they've managed to burn through the dollar sign 9 k from my dad when they should be easily saving money every month. They recently almost went broke again but got some more money after another relative passed away. They order tequila at every evening and throw most of it away. He has an Xbox and a PS4 with more games than I can count, and he recently offered to pay me to install Windows and software on the PC he bought Pribult. They recently decided to install a big fish tank in the house. The house is always in a horrible state. Clothes everywhere, moldy food, gross bathroom and full trash bags in their room. I hate coming home because of it, and it hurts. Spoiled by the government. Friend's ex has two kids and uses the money she gets from them to buy wine and cigarettes and go out clubbing, leaving her four and six year old home alone. She can't be bothered to feed them or take them to school, so they eat chocolate from the cupboard and only go to school when some of my friend's family can get down there to take them and pick them up. They sleep in one room on a mattress, no bed, surrounded by dog sheet because she wanted a dog but doesn't like having to walk it. The job center recently told her that, since she never turns up for the jobs they assign her, after enough time searching for a job, they assign one for you, they will be cutting off her job seekers. In a whirlwind of what she probably considered extreme effort she found a guy and screwed him literally and figuratively by getting pregnant and leaving him so they couldn't stop her job seekers. She's currently very pleased with herself because she gets an extra child support from the guy free job seekers and more childcare money for parties, she doesn't stop smoking or drinking, just for a pregnancy of course. Child services won't take her kids away because she doesn't actually hit them and they won't let my friend have them because he doesn't have the vagina, good logic. Oh, and my friend's grandmother got the kids and box for Christmas, but they can't play it because it and the living room TV have moved to mama's room. Throw away for privacy. I work in public service in Beverly Hills, California and am frequently in contact with kids. I have so many of these stories I have lost track. A couple memorable ones. I once had a woman tell me she couldn't pay a $1 fee because she just hired a new nanny and the nanny needed health insurance. I had someone yell at me that their taxes pay my salary, so I have to do whatever they want. I just gave her my boss's card and told her to discuss it with the city council. I've had people literally throw money at me because they thought that they could pay their way out of situations. I've overheard 13 year olds complaining that they broke their iPhones and their parents stopped buying them new ones and what bastards their parents were. Today there were 5 college freshmen sitting around a table and one started complaining that she can't get someone to take her $50 to write a paper for her. I wish that was the first time I'd heard college kids discussing paying people to do their papers. My office offers appointments for filing federal paperwork and we'll frequently get people dropping. I'm a Beverly Hills resident, as if that grants them super special treatment to skip the line for appointments. It doesn't. And they're always pissed. I grew up in a small midwestern farming town and this she just constantly blows my faking mind. But in my hometown, at one point I worked for a clothing store not even a very nice one, but in a nice neighborhood, and there was an incident when I finished folding a table full of t-shirts. Some woman and her daughter came up, demolished the table, and the daughter began fixing it, only to have her mother slap her hand away and say, they have people for that. So this behavior is everywhere. Edited all my typers. My young cousins. 
This requires a bit of backstory, because my family is quirky. There were six children born of the next generation from my dad's side of the family, myself and my two siblings, my older cousin, from my nurse aunt, and the two youngest ones, from my cardiologist uncle. Now, my siblings, older cousin, and I all had the influence of my grandma, who grew up nearly penniless, as in, gravy on bread for dinner broke, even though my brother, sister, and I were raised by a doctor. Fun fact, notice a trend in my family? My grandparents were a nurse and a doctor, respectively, and four of their five kids went into medical professions. My grandma made it abundantly faking clear that we are fortunate because of our parents and to always be generous to others. She even made it clear that the only reason she was in the upper middle class to begin with she was in was because she married my grandpa and never lorded money over anyone. Unfortunately, my grandma got small cell lung cancer in 2005, which is virtually incurable, and she passed away, which still faking stings to this day. I spent every weekend at her house. At that point, my uncle's kids were 5 and 1. They never had her influence, and as a result of her not being around, to temper their attitudes combined with my uncle spoiling them faking rotten, they've become insufferable little sheets at times. It also probably doesn't help that my aunt comes from a fuckload of money, from upper crust Key West billionaires. So, that said, my cousins are spoiled brats, especially the older one. They are nice enough, but they have zero concept of money. They constantly get the latest Mac products, laptops, pads, iPhones, every single time a new model comes out. The older one is talking about how he won't have to take out loans for MIT. He got a faking Tesla for his 16th birthday. When their parents were talking about moving and couldn't decide between two houses, he nonchalantly said, why don't we just buy both? He was 15. They constantly go around bragging about their wealth which infuriates the rest of us. My dad made some bad investments and he's now in debt to the eyes. And my aunt is a single mom who helped my cousin pay for her MA. All four of the older generation took out student loans. And we are all now in massive debt. I myself am gonna be applying to law school in a couple years. So I owe the US government something like $100,000. And again, my uncle and aunt completely indulge them. One holiday, my older cousin had been talking about money and how expensive his car was. I, having had a few glasses of wine, finally snap, in the middle of the dinner, you're not faking rich, you little sheet. If your parents cut you off, you'd have faking nothing. Shut him right up, and even his parents didn't say anything about it. I don't know if he changed his tune the rest of the time, but I know that around me, he doesn't act like a prick. So hopefully I channeled my grammar in setting the kids straight. TLDR. Cousins are spoiled brats because cancer is a beach. Working retail this Christmas I think I saw it. A customer came in with her 5 year old. Hi do you carry Apple watches that would fit a child? Me. How old is a child? We may have options for smaller bands that could be purchased separately. Customer. Oh this is her. She's 5. How much is your Apple Watch? Me. Oh. Well they start around $270 and I believe they go up to around $650 or so. We do have some alternatives that may be more suited to someone her age. If you'd like to take a look at those, they do run less. Customer. No. She wants an Apple Watch. Don't you sweetie? Kid. Yes. I want an Apple Watch. Me. Okay then. Does she have an iPhone? Because it's recommended that you have an iPhone to use all the apps on the Apple Watch. Customer. Oh. No she doesn't. Where can I get one? Me. I can have one of our phone techs set you up with one. If you have one of your own and are still set on the Apple Watch you could have her run apps off of yours. Customer. That's not necessary. I'll just get her her own. TLDR. Lady bought an iPhone and an Apple Watch for her 5 year old for Christmas. Second story. While working at a costume shop one time a guy threw a costume at me and his trashy wife called me a piece of faking beaches trash because their princess couldn't be a princess since the crown accessory had been stolen from the costume they wanted to buy. I offered them a discount on the costume and a crown accessory to balance it out but she wouldn't be able to be the princess that she wanted like all of her other friends. They kept calling her their princess. 
I finally told them, since the costume was missing pieces I just have to tear it to shreds and throw it in the garbage and their princess could look for a costume elsewhere, because clearly they weren't going to be happy with any available resolution I had for them. Slash slash edited for formatting. So I spent my high school in a town that was a weird mix of crazy rich people and mid to upper middle class folks, the rich people were there for the status or some sheet, the rest of us were there, because if you rented an apartment or bought a small house, taxes were cheaper than sending two kids to a private school as good as the public school there. So I have a lot of stories. My first car was a 26 year old Chevy G20, or 3 quarters ton rapist van, or it would have been, if the locks worked. I was used to walking or biking everywhere, so the most exciting thing about that car for me was that I could deliver pizza. Back in those days, I'd be able to pull 100 bucks in tips alone working a 4 hour rush shift on Thursdays, Fridays, and sometimes Saturdays. This is relevant because most of the other employees were either smart people from out of town who realized the commute was worth the tips, or kids like me whose parents wouldn't pay for them to go out. After I left, my brother worked there and told me about this kid who started delivery in a brand new Lexus. He totaled it on the way to school, so his patents bought him a beamed new BMW. I believe he said it was an M5. Well the dumbass totaled it while delivering, so his parents bought him yet another car. This one was a 911, also brand new. Well he totaled it again, also at work, then shows up the next day in another new 911. My boss, having had enough of his sheet, says he doesn't have a job anymore, the kid gets pissed, and his mom even comes in to try and bully my boss into keeping her special little snowflake working. Another time, some kid forgot to close his passenger door, he drove something more modest, but still a really nice car, so when he backed out of his parking spot his door swung out, got jammed against a solid sheet metal panel on my van, and entered it. The guy was besides himself super apologetic, and he offered to fix his car and give it to me. Bear in mind, even used his car was worth at least 20 grand. If I sold my van for more than 800 bucks I would've been ripping someone off. I almost considered taking his offer, but he was acting kinda off, his dad was into some shady stuff, and my family wasn't too poor for some basic morals. Instead, I took a tennis ball and fixed the dent, minus some cracking and flaking paint, in like 10 minutes, and told him we were all good. My cousin got a laptop for Christmas in 2007, when he was 10. He was pissed with my aunt, and he growled something, like I wanted a Mac. It's not hard. Flabbergasted, she looked over at me, and I jokingly said yeah, stupid now my cousin is about 20, I haven't seen him in years, but he's a douchebag. Like I hate to stereotype people, but, overweight Zelda beanie, Cheeto fingers. So he comes to my parents house on Christmas day, his mom gets him a sweater and he says yeah, not a big fan of loggers she tries to make the case for it being a nice gift and he straight up tells her yeah, anyway, not for me. I'm not gonna wear this, so. My parents didn't know he was coming. He certainly wasn't invited, because he's a fedora wearing tool. But my mom gets some little gift package of planters mix nuts and throws a bow on it. Either she or my dad, I don't remember, because I was boiling with rage, hands it to him, and says Merry Christmas. And he takes it, and puts it in his pile of sheet his mom got him without looking up or saying thanks. I know these aren't super sweet 16 levels of being spoiled, but I'd say it's a good example of the long term effects of spoiling your douchey kid. Also, I really 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 was craving salty mixed nuts that day, I regret not just taking them from him. My friend's daughter is pregnant by an idiot. His parents are wealthy and gave up on him at a young age due to his stupidity. They support him just enough for him to leave them alone. Due to that combination. He thinks the universe just fixes sheet for him, and whatever problem will just turn out okay. He somehow passed that on to my friend's daughter who I can only assume, chooses to believe whatever, and whoever just tells her what she wants to hear. She was complaining after her baby shower that the stuff she got was second hand or just not good enough. The room that her mother set up for a haven for her, and the baby doesn't have nice enough furniture, and the new mattress her mother bought was too soft. 
when her mom brought up the fact that she declined to go pick the bed and could get off her ass and exchange it herself she threw a fit. She's gone through three cars that her dad slash stepmom have given her, along with the two her mom struggled to help her get, and some of those were definitely her fault because she was trying to get upgrades. Mind you the mom's husband was out of work due to his sudden onset of cancer. Now she is upset that the car grandma tried to give her doesn't have working account and threw such a fit that she's not getting the car anymore. I think the last straw was her reaction to the suggestion that the baby daddy or her actually work to get the money to fix the a slash c. Oh, and the baby daddy hasn't told his parents about the baby due in a few weeks and with a straight face insists that he only plans on seeing the baby a couple times a year and will wait until the kid is 11 to be in its life except for the two months tops it'll take for his parents get over it and let him move back in when they find out about the baby so can he please stay at her mom's house. He sees absolutely no problem with that and doesn't understand why that won't fly. He also thinks everything should be free, the baby will only need one diaper, and they can just wash it, it doesn't need shoes or socks, because it doesn't walk, and he can start a tilapia farm with the few tilapia he bought, and is raising in his parents pool. It's like a real life Dirk Gently, but he serves no larger purpose, but to drive people crazy, and confound them with his logic, and his obvious lies, that he doesn't realize are so ridiculous, but somehow doesn't notice, that people don't believe a word he is saying, like that he's an astrophysicist. Holy digression, Batman, but I apparently needed to get that out, so I'm leaving it. My housemate throws tantrums when he doesn't get what he wants or when someone says anything against him. Like Philon, 5 year old in a toy shop tantrums. The only specific example I can think of is that one of my other housemates, let's call him housemate B, was playing CS, Geo with a friend of ours, let's call him friend, and housemate A, being the total goddamn child that he is, threw a tantrum at housemate B saying it was his turn to play video games with friend, and that housemate B was trying to steal friend away. It doesn't really seem that spoiled, but the tantrum wasn't exactly an isolated incident. He does it over everything. Ask him not to use your stuff, because he doesn't clean it. Tantrum. Ask him to empty the bin, because he filled it up. Tantrum. Tell him it's his turn to buy toilet paper, washing up liquid, etc. because everyone else in the house has bought them in the past. Tantrum. Say no to his request to take your PlayStation into his room so he can play games on it. Tantrum. Say no to him telling you to pay for his food when you've all gone to McDonald's, even though he has the most money out of everyone in the house, combined. Faking tantrum again. He assumes that everything in the house belongs to him or is his to use and everyone living with him is there to pay for his sheet clean up his mess, and otherwise treat him like the goddamn sun shines out of his goddamn ass. He throws tantrums over being told what to do, especially when it comes to cleaning up the mess that he's made. It's been 5 months now and my girlfriend, who doesn't even live here, has tidied the house more times than he's even attempted it. He is 19, and going to university. The worst case of spoiled brat who should've grown out of it by now I've ever seen. Edit, I have a lot of frustrations when it comes to this guy. This became a massive vent. Kids, kids everywhere. Look how smart X is. Oh, why is just a little princess? No, this is bad. As a single father, I have a steady following of single mothers. They hunt guys like me, so I've been subjected to just about every spoiled brat in my county. It's one thing to instill confidence and display love for your child, but when it's a one person parenting situation, most always with women, it's a bad idea to puff those kids up beyond all reason. Grandparents are particularly good at this, especially since they get to go home to their bunt cake and leave the little hellions for others to deal with. People have this incessant need to overreach and try to fill some projected void that a broken relationship often leaves. A void may exist, but not to the heights they've created in their minds. I've seen many kids that are quite obviously broken before they're even in kindergarten. Not because their dad took off, but because people inflate their little egos, allow them to effectively run the household, give them whatever they want, etc. It will backfire. It will cause more harm than good. 
It will damage the child in the long term. It absolutely will keep rational people away from you and your little bubble. When the reality finally hits that their child has some issues, rather than look at themselves and how they've contributed to this, they just start medicating them and throw mental illness terms around. He slash she doesn't have bipolar you dummy, you spoiled the little fakers beyond your ability to control the situation anymore. I don't date single mothers anymore because of this. My fiance's sister isn't talking to her mum and dad because she seems to hate them, I guess. She took 5 years to complete a 3 year degree, her living expenses funded by her parents. After graduating she went immediately back home and lives comfortably rent free, she's now 26. She has just bought a house for her boyfriend to live in and rent out the other rooms. Her dad gave her £40,000 for the deposit and bought her brand new furniture from M&S, expensive UK shop. She's only ever been nice to me so this is hearsay, but I do believe my so on the matter, most people like the sister, but I think she has a public face and a family face. Oh yeah, and her rich parents took them all to New York on holiday, and she said her parents were cruel because they went for a walk in Central Park when it was raining and her feet got wet. She's just super weird and seems to hate everyone including her parents who are wealthy and make life easy for her. Probably has some issues. Major insecurity perhaps because her sister, my so, is much smarter and everyone knows. Edit, I'm not sure this fully answers the question because you're only only literally spoiled. If being treated generously makes your personality sheet, maybe she'd have a sheet personality anyway. I don't pretend I grew up anything other than middle class and I never had to work a day in my life until I graduated and my parents gave me a wedge to buy a house. And so's parent gave to her. I would never criticize someone for just being lucky, as long as they're grateful or generous, as long as it's not solely for ostentation. You're only open to criticism if you're a cunt about either of those things. I worked at a camp back in university for kids. It was a type of camp that catered to rich kids, and many of them were from the USA and the uber rich areas of Toronto. I have two, kind of three, campers to talk about. Campers 1 and 2 this one kid was a picky eater and quite overweight for his age, around 9 or 10. His parents refused to give him anything that he didn't like to eat and had it in his camper notes that he was to be given the food he wanted. As a result, he ate nothing but pizza, chicken nuggets, and french fries. That's it. Now if you know anything about basic nutrition, you know that you need fiber to keep your poop together. Since he did not have any fiber, he wouldn't even eat bread, he had liquid sheets that would often just seep out of him. There would be no warning, he would just poop himself, and then the smell would alert everyone around him. He barely noticed either. So one day, he pooped his pants in the middle of the cabin, and my co-counselor takes the kids out, and I clean up, not a big deal. But then camper hash 2 writes this kid sheets his pants on the cabin wall in sharpie. His immediate reaction to it being discovered was to cry and say he was sorry, then yell at me for not accepting his apology because he needed to say it to the kid who sheet himself, then actually show that he was sorry by being nicer overall. It was very clear that camper hash 2 was used to just saying he was sorry, then there were no repercussions at all and had zero remorse. Back to camper hash 1, I once sat with him at a table for 45 minutes trying to get him to eat maybe 5 grams of broccoli. He stared at it for the entire time, wishing it to go away. Camper 3 this kid was an amazing kid, 9 to 10 years old. He was a sweetheart. But his parents had coddled him so much that he was unable to use real toilet paper. He continued to use these incredibly expensive baby wipes that his parents had to keep sending him. Success story though, after encouragement, he stopped using the wipes when he got home and we got a really amazing letter from his parents thanking us. TLDR Camper 1 didn't eat veggies, so he sheet himself involuntarily. Camper 2 made fun of Camper 1, thinking that an apology was all that was needed to make it go away. Camper 3 used baby wipes as toilet paper until he was 10. I met a kid online from a circle of friends, most I know, are wonderful people really, until you got this piece of sheet. 
Let me start by saying this 13 years old transgender girl one Abe, whose only motivation is the set she gets online from a bunch of creepy other kids who are a few years older yeah. I'm sorry I have to say this gross sheet, but this just offends me to a maddening level, and I'm not even SJW. Starts leaving chats on Skype, because I get a gaming laptop. My first gaming PC, my second console after my PS4, used when I first bought it, and my second computer. I had very little growing up moving from foster care to relatives in Kyoto to other relatives in the US most my life. So I stuck to the same few sets of clothes for years, I don't grow much, 5 feet 1 inch and 43 kilograms at 17 as of this moment, and the same old laptop for 9 years, which I should mention, was a pass me down PC, but god bless it was a Sony Veo. It had served me well while I gamed, studied, and worked on music. However, this kid has two PS Vitus, every Nintendo system, Xbox One, PS4, a PC rig, a Microsoft Surface, iPad, iPhone, and is pre-ordering a Nintendo Switch. He is bragging on these group chats that he's planning to use his welfare money from the Godam Her Majesty's government for depression and social anxiety act he puts up with as much plausibility as most angsty kids on the internet who hate their parents hate everyone around them, and think they're smarter than all of the above, for a new switch. But where's my faking welfare money? Where's welfare for the guy replying on this comment? Welfare for you, you, and you while we're at it. You don't even have to have half the acting skill of Nicolas Cage or Donnie Wahlberg. I don't understand how he got the papers through. Anyways, the moment I start celebrating, legitimately grateful and happy that my aunt finally decides she can get me the Dell Inspiron 15 gaming I wanted for $750, but she pushes an MSI Apache Pro with a VR Eddy GTX 1060, all of my yes, instead, the kid has a jealous attack and starts leaving the chats then proceeds to talk about me behind my back because I'm rubbing it in his face, even though the worst thing, if anything I did, was bad at all, I think was tearing up and getting jiddly, because my god, I hurt it for anything, that can run my favorite games. Luckily, I'm kindly and, so he was pretty much cluelessly talking shit about me to my friends. Are you kidding? Him and his reputation here for bragging about his welfare money abuse, his excessive game systems, his PC rig, and his excessive presence then gets busy with me and tries to turn my friends against me. He fails, gets his ass kicked to the curb, and he still calls himself my friend. This isn't even the first time he does something like this. TLDR. This kid has almost every platform for gaming, abuses his welfare money, and throws a jealous fit when I get my first gaming PC and my second platform after my PS4. I don't even care if he reads this. One of my cousins was being a little as whole at a family gathering several years back. At 9 years old, this kid was already Prime's Barks kiddo material and thought he was hot sheet because he's a military brat and lives in close proximity to guns, so that gave him full right to do whatever he wanted. This included walking up to people and trying to punch them in the sack. This worked out fantastically for him when I saw him hobbling towards me with the special kind of retarded I'm so smart like truly moronic children get when they think they are being sneaky and took the world's slowest lunge for my junk. I slapped his hand away, backhanded him across the face, and pushed him away. He fat waddled back and fell on his ass, then proceeded to wail up a storm and run to his mom claiming I hit him for no reason. What he failed to account for, being a retarded piece of shit who has never faced repercussions for anything, or had to learn how to truly lie. I was not alone in the room when he attacked, and there were 5 other people that witnessed the worst attempt at a crotch punch ever that all vouched for me. I hit him dismissively, with the kind of force you'd use to shoo a fly, with the hand that didn't have all my rings. It didn't even redden his plump little khaki fiend cheeks any more than they already were. The fact he can't keep his balance walking backwards 5 steps isn't my problem. His mother, my aunt, decreed that in order to make up for the pain and suffering he had to endure, in have to face repercussions for his action, in being smacked for trying to assault me, that he should be taken to the mall post test and be allowed to pick up a new game for his PSP. Quality parenting. My little brother leaving for college and coming back a SJW hipster who hangs out at Starbucks unironically. 
I'm completely disabled. Two major back surgeries, five rupture discs, and just found out I've got an immune disorder to boot. I could fill a book full of what I had to do to survive. But that's not the point. I survived my senior year of college when my back went out. I got offered a PhD position because of my abilities and hard work. I wasn't sure if I wanted to spend 4 more years of my life in school, plus my back wasn't getting any better. I eventually come home to my parents house to recover. I had to use a walker to get around. At 25 years old, in my prime, I went from the most in shape to the most out of shape in my life because of all the steroids and being bedridden. I was so bad looking, a Saudi Arabian in my college town saw me walking for exercise and thought I was homeless, so he gave me a coat. I went from being ripped, gym twice a day some days, to looking homeless in a year. I was, and still am, completely in debt. Had to live off credit cards and student loans. Had to swallow my pride and get food stamps and watch while everyone else in line had an expensive iPhone when they just came out, while I was the only person with a normal feature phone. I had doctors lie to me, I had police lie on police reports when my medicine got stolen. I had to climb a faking mountain or simply lay down and die, and I chose to climb. Then my little brother, this little twat, has the gall to lecture me about how I should check my privilege for being white. As if my whiteness somehow grants me magical access to medical care, free money, and health that others don't, and moreover, that I should be ashamed of it. I'm in a goddamn wheelchair in my 20s, and you're lecturing me about privilege? If being white gets me benefits, what button do I magically push to get them? Because at the end of the day, with all of my privileges, if I can't be healthy and work a normal job to pay for my family, what the goddamn fuck is a privilege? It's nothing but an empty word used to shame people, that's what it is. My dad's pretty high up on the list, among some of the things he's done. Was raised in a moderately wealthy family, my grandfather was in some influential role in the local government and actually ran for senate at one point, got into all kinds of trouble, but never enough to stick, probably because of my grandfather. Was offered a full ride on a sports scholarship to a college, but turned it down after his father said something to him about him not being able to handle the commitment. Having met my grandfather and seen the type of man that he was, very serious, could be a little harsh. I'm pretty sure that this was meant to be a serious talk about whether or not he was ready to handle the responsibility and wouldn't just party all the time and lose his scholarship, which is a totally reasonable and valid question to ask of him, because the answer was and is a very solid no. Because of that abuse, yes he says he was abused, because of that one incident, he turned down the scholarship, dropped out of high school in his senior year, and joined the army left the army, before seeing active combat, possibly with a dishonorable discharge, bounds between jobs because he hates having to actually work, but doesn't know how to not spend money, particularly on get rich quick. Schemes so that he doesn't have to do any real work eventually met and married my mom after only a few months of dating and moved into her house still couldn't hold down a job so contributed nothing to the bills but continued to buy things he didn't need and invest in his schemes. Signed them up for various programs and things, including hosting a foreign student, without asking my mom heard about trucking on the radio one day, and was fooled by its promise of being a great way to work for yourself, and make a ton of cash, not untrue at least at the time, technically speaking, but you have to put in way more effort, that he was anticipating, made mom put him through trucking school to get his commercial license, on a nurse's salary, while she also paid the rest of the bills. Tried to drop trucking after a few months because he had to actually work, got mad at mom, and was openly resentful of her when she told him that in no uncertain terms was he allowed to quit when she'd paid so much to get him certified eventually had kids, which my mom has implied was an accident, for reference, which he clearly did not understand the gravity of, he once left me. All of two years old, with my incredibly sick mother, so that he could go to his best friend's bachelor party was on the road all the time during my and my brother's early childhood, and yet expected us to be his adoring and loyal children when he came home, and was obviously irritated that we preferred our mother to him. 
when he was home spent most of his time drunk out of his mind and verbally abusing us, my earliest memory is sobbing and hiding in the bathroom because it was the only place with a locking door, holding the cordless phone and trying to work up the courage to call the cops on him while he screamed abuse at my mother, eventually quit trucking when gas became too expensive and he started losing money on runs. After which he spent most of his time at home, drunk. Eventually started working for a friend of his because it was the only job he could get, quit after a few years because they got into a spat got into an accident and needed surgery and has lived as a victim ever since and believes that he is an invalid despite being able to get up and do things that he wants to do but he can't contribute to the household in any meaningful way, did nothing to earn money but still spent it. Surprising no one. Got into a lot of tax trouble and dragged my mom down with him because she was trusting him to take care of things, ruining her life in the process, cannot be trusted to do anything, up to and including paying his bills, which means that my mom has to take care of everything, also usually can't afford to pay his bills, eventually settled a lawsuit on his accident and has not shut up about how he should have gone to court and gotten way more money for all of his pain and suffering has spent all of his money since the accident on things that he doesn't need. Refuses to do anything for anyone but himself cannot take any form of advice or instruction and considers it criticism and insubordination, up to and including requests to turn his television or movies down, particularly at 3am seems to genuinely believe that he is the only person in the entire world who matters and everyone else exists to support him tldr. Dad is and always has been a selfish as who plays the victim for. Sympathy. Edit for spacing. Whoops. Nearly 30 years later, and I still remember this one, I had a toy car which came with a special key worked more like a wrench, which one used to wind it up before racing. One day my sister takes the key and starts gouging the hardwood floor. Tried to stop her, but little short of physically damaging force would have sufficed, at which point I would be in trouble for hurting her. So I go and get my old man, and tell him she's giving the floor. Sister gets yelled at a bit, then my toy gets thrown in the garbage. Reason, you should have stopped her now I distinctly remember getting in sheet several times like that one way or the other. Little sheet of a sister smirking you can make me, I'll tell them you hit me. Especially irritating because I was supposed to take care of her, but had no authority to make her behave. Of course, eventually I figured that hey, I was going to get in sheet anyhow, so I really wild on her really good, and told her you'll get me in trouble anyways, so from now on it there will be a reason for it, that kept from doing sheet that was too crazy, but frankly she's still grown up, to be a self-indulgent sheet at times. One moment she'll brag about how good she's doing, recently called my house, which I've put 4 years of Renos into, and probably added 40% value, a pile of sheet compared to hers. The next moment she'll go whining to mommy and daddy about how hard things are, and ask for handouts, then badmouth them behind their backs. Not the worst case I've seen, especially when you look at certain political entities or entertainment industry elite, but the closest to home. Discipline your kids and make them work for the good as in life, but for faking sake please also do, so semi equally between offspring. Also, discipline doesn't mean beat, but a spanking or two in the right situation can make a difference. I grew up extremely poor, food bank, food stamps, WIC, welfare, and Medicaid. I studied hard, did 6 years in the military, earned 90 credit hours and now have 3 kids aged 8. 4, and 2. I have been working for a railroad for the last two and a half years, and was laid off about a year ago. In the meantime, I have been doing odd work, I pointy, bartending, greenhouse work to make ends meet. Interviewing for any real job is met with a quick and courteous end to the interview as most employers realize I will return to my position when called as the union position is incredibly good. My wife and I are frugal we own 2002s and had some savings to float us in case a layoff happened. However, after a year the savings are depleted, and we are finally strapped. My mother on the other hand, who kicked me out when I was 16, has had multiple substance abuse issues, and has spent a large portion of her life leeching off rich men by exploiting her above average looks. 
Her current succubus project of three years runs a successful online import furniture store and has a financial portfolio somewhere around 7 to 9 million. Now before you judge, please keep in mind I've borrowed money from my mother once in my life to the tune of $135 out for a week before paying her back. She came to my home that I rent for $675 a month the other day and proceeded to complain to me about getting in trouble because she had racked up $20k the previous month on a credit card with massages, shopping and eating out. Appalled, I swallowed my internal monologue that was screaming fuck you. Then instead, decided I would bring perspective by sharing some of my own financial issues under the guise of an empathetic comparison. Her response? Yeah, young kids are tough. We've all been there. I'm starting to understand how psychotic Freudian serial killers are born. Joking. I'm pretty late, but my uncle, mom's bill, used to work in the military as an a guy or something in Kuwait. Don't ask me too much about it, I don't know how it works. He quits his job, that's what he tells us, but I suspect he got fired and decides to move back to India to nab a job that will transfer him to America there are a lot of those in India apparently. Instead of moving in with his own family or using his own savings to get a place until he gets a job, he starts freeloading at my grandparents place. He's been there for 5 years now without having worked a single day and demands to be treated like a god. Sills are supposed to be treated very nicely there, but he's pushing it. My grandparents are retired doctors, so they get a government pension which is enough to sustain them and the maid they have. Problem is, my uncle brought my aunt and their two sons. Four more mouths to feed. My aunt doesn't like it, but he is verbally abusive and she is very docile by nature, so she can't speak out. My grandparents are both nearing 80 and my grandpa has diabetes and is slowly losing his vision. He still has to run to a clinic to help sick people every day to earn enough money to feed this faking parasite. Me and my family live in America, so there is little we can really do to help, but every time my mom calls to check up, she gives him an earful and it's always oh, don't worry, I'll get a job. In fact, I have this lined up right now. Then nothing. This is bullshit really. My mom and I were intermittently homeless the first 5 years of my life. We rented a friend of hers unfinished basement for about 9 months when I was 4. The friend's son and I became best friends during this time. His mom was convinced her kid sheet roses and never really disciplined him. His toy collection and attitude reflected this. I was constantly told how much smarter, stronger, and richer than me he was by both him and his mom. Years later I had worked miles off to get into the best high school in the city still one of my proudest accomplishments. The next year he starts bragging about how smart he is and how he laced the entrance exam. He even wants to know my score so he can compare. Tess comes and goes and we never hear about it again as he enrolls in his local public school. During my senior year when all of us are celebrating my mom's 40th after we've all gone to bed, my mom wakes up to this sheet trying to pull her underwear off. She stops him and asks what the fuck he thinks he's doing. The entitled brick starts arguing with her about why he should get to fuck her. Fast forward a few more years and multiple rap allegations are hanging over his head as he goes to trial for the most recent against a minor. His mom has the balls to hit me up on Facebook in hopes I'll hang out with the pederast because me not talking to him really hurts his feelings. While I don't know if I should use spoiled rotten or not, this mostly fits with my brother. We've lived with my single mom for years since my dad left and she's done a great job taking care of me and my two other siblings. My bro is very good at getting into trouble, constantly smokes pot and spends more time sulking than doing anything on his own to get this life together. My mom has literally filled out every application for every job he's ever had and quit slash got fired from. Today I'm 21 heading for my RN and living at home. And my mom is pretty excited about that for me. My bro, on the other, is 25 who has been through 5 used cars all bought by my mom. I still have my first that's now mine. And my mom's, since my bro totaled her Ford Explorer. He's gotten ticket after ticket that he's never paid for. Because my mom tosses the money she doesn't have towards him last minute. She pays his phone bill. I'm honestly glad I've been on my grandparents. 
family plan since early high school, and while he went to a vocational school that he's not paying for, you guessed it, my mommies. He luckily managed to snag a great job at a Chevy dealership and could afford to move out. Ended up getting fired because, for some odd reason, he thought it was okay to show up 15 minute late for work every day. Ended up getting fired, lost his apartment, moved back home, and now spends his days asking my mom for $60 twice a week, getting high so he's never clean enough to take a drug test, going to parties, n. Unsurprisingly, three months after moving out, he EOT looking for a job and complaining about living at home. My mom does get upset, but constantly enables him. I'm just so glad I've never been a headache for my mom like my bro constantly is, and I'm starting to fear my little 13 year old sister will turn out the same, minus the smoking hopefully. So, yeah, I don't know if he's spoiled rotten like the other stories of douchebag kids, but he's definitely annoying a sheet. Edit, almost forgot, just this past weekend, he got mad at his phone for reasons, held it in one hand, and then slammed his other fist against the screen, until it was demolished, and then proceeded to tell my mom he was almost in a car accident, and the phone went crazy in the car and that's how it got faked up. She replaced it the day of for $100. I hate him. My dog's very spoiled. She had a stomach infection for a while, so she lost a ton of weight. My mom spoiled her a bit before, but because she was sick, she started to give her all the best food she could get. She would buy dollar sign 20 dash $30 worth of steak for a meal. A single meal for my dog. So now she's picky, if the meat is too rough slash flavorless I'm guessing, and refuses to eat cheap steak that my family will eat to celebrate something. Mom came across a very expensive fish head popular in Asian culture, it's just the head, but it was large and cost about 300 US dollars. A church member gave it to my mom to feed my sick father, who insisted on giving it to the dog once he read that it was good for her. Now my dog doesn't eat cheaper fish slash sea products. She was spoon fed because she had no energy to get up, so sometimes she refuses to eat unless she's being petted while being spoon fed. Bonus that doesn't have to do with food, when she was sick, it broke my mom's heart to see her laying on cold floor, so she now has a $200 fancy dog bed, that she doesn't sleep on related to, she doesn't use the dog bed, but sleeps on a contoured single person couch my dad bought for mom to help her posture, so that couch now belongs to the dog. She got some old blanket as a toy once, and tore it up on the backyard, we just cleaned it up, and didn't scold her. She now occasionally tears up other perfectly good blankets, but she's offended when scolded about it. She used to do this cute pounds thing that got people to play with her when she was a 20 pound puppy. Now that she's 90 plus pounds, she still does it and hurts people including me. She slept on my bed as a puppy. Now she thinks my bed is hers. My stepsister has been throwing a huge fit with my parents, namely my stepdad, regarding my stepdad's old home that he's renting out to me. He offered her the place first. In fact, he kicked out the previous tenants so that she could move in. She was moving back and wanted slash needed a place to stay. She arrived to the house, wanting to clean it up before she moved in. It was a mess. Previous tenants were pretty messy, apparently. Both my parents had offered to not only help her clean it, but offered to clean it for her themselves. She declined their offers, tried to clean it, got overwhelmed, and declared the place unlivable. So, I was offered the house, since my girlfriend and I had been hunting for a place to stay, and had been having trouble finding a decent place. Parents cleaned it up really well for us, and we moved in. Now, I guess because she saw how nice the house was when cleaned, it's a nice house already, we guess she got jealous, or resentful. So she beached two other family members, that it wasn't fair, that she got cheated out of the place, that I always get stuff from my parents, I don't. If anything, she's usually the one, that gets what she wants, and generally acting, like I stole the place from her, when she very much had first dibs on it. She stopped talking to my stepdad. Didn't show up for Christmas. Don't think she even talked to him for his birthday a couple weeks ago. She certainly wasn't at the dinner we had for him. She also held our garage remote hostage for two months. Even though I was asking for it back. So we could actually use the garage. 
Not sure it's the worst case I've seen, but it's the most recent, so I'm sharing it. This was last spring, and it was senior day at the university I attend. This is when high school seniors that are prospective freshmen tour the residential halls in the sorority slash fraternity, Greek, houses. I work for residential life as a community mentor, resident assistant, community advisor, whatever you wanna call it, and I was giving a tour of the hall I live in. Tours end at 3.30, and it was 3.27. I'm answering any questions parents or students may have as they leave. I overhear this one girl, carrying an iPhone 6 Plus, Michael Kors purse, all Kendra Scott jewelry, yelling at her mom that she better take her to tour the Greek houses and she will be pissed if she doesn't. The mom is looking at the campus map and glances at me for help. I politely tell her the fastest route for walking, if they really want to go, even though the houses will more thank likely be closed when they get there, and they really will not make it before they close, 10 minute walk. The girl is scoffing and giving me the dirtiest look, and rushing her mom to get going. The dad then asked for the fasted route to the parking lot to get their car which was 10 minutes walk from the red hall in the opposite direction of the Greek houses. The girl is now cussing up a storm and parents aren't doing anything about it. I apologize and tell them that the Greek houses stick to their schedule pretty closely and will more than likely be closed by the time they get there. Parents were the sweetest, but the daughter was the polar opposite, never have been or will be fans of sororities slash fraternities. TLDR, I was giving tours of a residential hall, as the last group was leaving, a daughter cussed out her parents for not having enough time, less than 5 minutes, to arrive and tour sorority houses, while the parents did nothing. I don't like Greeks. I saw an older woman, maybe in her 50s, throw a temper tantrum in a gym, because someone changed the channel on the TV she was watching. She yelled at the guy who changed the channel. She couldn't be bothered to get off her exercise machine, so she kept hollering for a manager until a trainer fetched one for her. She tells the manager her story and it's as if this is the worst thing that's ever happened to her. She demands that they change the channel back to what she was watching, but has no clue what she was watching. The guy gladly agreed to use another TV there is a whole row of them and pieced out. The manager is trying to be helpful and suggesting things like how about I go through the channels and you tell me when it's the right one. And can you try to tell me what kind of channel you were watching? Was it a show, movie, documentary, food channel, news, talk show? Do you see it on any of these other screens? And she just keeps freaking out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what channel it was. I just want the one I was watching. I was watching this TV first and that man, he changed it. I just want you to change it back. I don't understand why this is so difficult. The same channel I was watching. I'm missing my show. Change it B-A-C-K-K. Eventually, with the help of the manager and someone who was watching the next TV over giving hints like it wasn't news. I think it was a show or a movie. Something with police cars earlier. They were able to find the right channel and save a day. About a decade ago I was an optometrist technician in a mall and part of that was doing basic pre-exam. This included an NCT to check eye pressure. Most people call this the puff test where you stare into a machine and it blows a short burst of air at your eye. I'm not sure how typical our machine was, but we couldn't control when the puff happened you just had to sit there in dread anticipation of the discomforting puff in the eye and a very loud bang. People hated that machine, kids especially. With kids we were used to tears, screams, even biting and spitting, but the girl I'll never forget came in with two women, probably mom and an aunt. I think she was 11 or 12, and she did not want the NCT and started crying. So mom and aunt each took one of her hands and mom said, let's make a deal. The girl wanted magnetic rocks or something, so the mom said they'd get magnetic rocks if she did the test, but she still wouldn't do it, so they promised her something else. After four or five promises and lots of scream crying, I finally got the reading and sent her to the doctor. All I could think was how faked she was going to be when she grew up. I guess she'd be about 20 now, and probably a real joy to be around when she's been bribed to do necessary things her whole life. 
No one will see this, but my friend is the son of some Russian weapon manufacturer and has a fantastic apartment across the street from where he used to go to uni in London. I don't think he owns it, just rents. Suddenly one day he comes to me one day and says he wants to build his own gaming PC. Well, after me convincing him not to go for a pre-built, I was thinking oh cool, gonna see what I can do, value for money etc. Dude says he was gonna buy a cheap pre-built for £1,500, so see what I can do for that sort of money. I was a bit taken aback, but I guess I should have expected it knowing who he is. He went to Eton College, the poshest school in the UK. So basically his only instruction being I want a 1080 I went about my business as a favor. I think he offered payment, and I said he didn't have to. Build day comes around, once everything's been delivered, and I go over to his to build it under the impression we'd do it together, and I'd teach him having done it myself before. Turns out, the time he asked me over he was actually out, to dinner with one of his Eton friends, and his girlfriend was the only one home. I ended up building it with her instead, and I think she enjoyed it, and it took a little longer than I'd expected, so we'd just finished when he got home. He then comes and checks it out etc then turns around and offers me a bunch of cash and says this should be enough right. I felt like it was kinda rude to refuse at this point. I had expected him to offer me a tenner or something and that would have been less guilty feeling, but he just handed over pounds 100 plus to me like nothing. Don't get me wrong, I was very grateful, especially as a poor uni student, but it was more of a realization that this guy's pretty faking loaded. A brother and sister I went to primary and high school with used to have everything. If you saw a toy advertised on Saturday morning TV you could guarantee that he would have it at school on Monday. The great thing was he was happy to share. I was the poor kid at my village school. I was by no means poor, but I was the child of a single mother and had less than my other classmates. So I made this kid my best friend. He had everything. He lived in this huge house in our village. His bedroom always reminded me of Josh Baskin's apartment in Big. Every toy you can imagine. He had a Mega Drive and a SNES and his own Sky TV connection in his room. I practically lived there for about 3 years. When we got to high school we drifted apart, and he turned into a real spoiled brat. He threw a tantrum on the coach to Elton Towers, because he couldn't sit at the back. His mum was there to see him off, and ended up driving him the whole way, because he refused to get on the coach. He would also pay people to embarrass other people. For instance he paid a guy a tenner to pull down a girl's pants. The girl in question was a quiet girl and was quite big. The guy did it and got expelled from school. I bumped into him at pub late last year and he's a chef now who owns the pub. He is still an absolute prick, but he gave me a free bottle wine. My ex has had two brand new fully loaded Jeep Wranglers purchased for her within three years for no reason. Her parents policy? We don't want you to deal with someone else's problems. She's never worked an actual job, once a job at a church, which her parents set up, doing daker stuff once a week, and now she works for her mom copying papers for $12 an hour, for somewhere upward of maybe 8 hours a week. Her parents are paying her college tuition and her family is friends with the police around here or something so, when she got pulled over she ended up getting out of it, after she got the ticket, by complaining to her dad's friend. She once got pulled over going 20 over in a school zone, and got off with a warning, and then proceeded to absolutely lose her sheet to me about how worthless that cop was even though nothing happened. She constantly drives drunk as sheet and somehow hasn't lost her license yet. After she dumped my sorry ass, after faking around with everything that moves, while we were together I might add, she still kept me around and somehow I would end up doing her homework for her, and paying to buy her coffee and sheet, while she had another boyfriend faking embarrassing, that I somehow got wrapped up in that. I'll let myself get cucked. She has a gift at manipulation, I guess. Luckily I got out of that, but it took way too long to realize I was part of the problem slash being a dumbass. Last I heard she's an alcoholic and does nothing except party, go to concerts, and go to a school which she's not doing sheet in, still lives at home, and has accomplished absolutely nothing, because she doesn't need or want to do a damn thing. 
Maybe I'm just salty, but I've never met anyone else that has had so much handed to them who chooses to do so little with it, and then beaches about the minor inconveniences during the whole thing. Man I've got one. Doesn't involve cars or anything like that, but I'll explain why. My flatmate's cousin is 11. He's a classic case of the parents buying his love because, to be honest, they're pretty neglectful. The kid always smells bad, and seems to live in the same tracksuit trousers even when going to school. Context, his dad is a career for the elderly so is out of the house a lot on calls, but when he's off work he's constantly in the book is betting on everything possible. His mum works part time, while he's at school, but has epilepsy, and has had a few really bad fits resulting in hospital trips and test CCT. When she's well though she spends the rest of her time in bed watching TV. This kid is the most spoiled kid I've ever met. He gets every new game console when they come out. He's gone through 3 plus Nintendo DS XLS. For Christmas he got a new PS4, plus games, a gaming laptop plus accessories and software to do let's plays on YouTube, still yet to be done, and probably never will be, and a dog. Because he can't sleep in his own bed, being still afraid of the dark, and a dog would surely help that. His birthday was in November, and he got a brand new iPhone. An 11 year old. No one that young needs a phone at all Emma but hey. The parents only got him one to play Pokemon Go. Three months later he's lost the phone. He breaks things on purpose to get something new, and his behavior gets blamed on the fact he has autism. He doesn't. My brother does, so I know what it looks like. Even if he does it's on the very low end of the scale. The parents don't believe that though, because it takes the blame away from them just being shitty people. They have a daughter too. Just turning 20. They bought her a shopping holiday to New York, staying at a hotel in Times Square, and paid for her holiday in Amsterdam three weeks ago. My younger cousin unfortunately had her parents go through a nasty divorce. My aunt tries her best. But she was verbally abused by her ex-husband and emotionally beaten down to the point that she had no confidence or ability to stand her ground for several years. She's doing amazingly well now. She had difficulty at first standing up to her six-year-old monster for fear of losing custody of her daughter forever. This situation is much better now and the girl is much more balanced now while home with her mom. Her ex-husband used their six-year-old as a weapon in the divorce. He was the one to leave the household after refusing marriage counseling, but for some reason he felt the need to punish my aunt for not rolling over and giving complete custody to him, despite having very little interest in the child before. It's a control thing, so he would fill his six-year-old's head with all sort of ideas about what she was allowed to do, would coach her on things to say to her mom, etc. He used to ask my aunt for extra time outside the custody arrangement in front of the daughter, and when my aunt refused the response would be sorry, you mom doesn't want us to spend time together. The 6 year old girl would come home and tell her mother that she wanted a 50 over 50 custody arrangement between her parents. She would scream that she hated her mother, would throw tantrums if she wasn't allowed to eat fast food and junk food. Even now as an 8 year old, if asked to clean her room she says that she might understand why she has to clean her room if my aunt explains why she has to a responsive because you have to results in a meltdown, but she'll eventually do it. There are a lot of other examples, more specific that I can't go into, but our view is that her behaviors come from the time she spends with her father. Through the daughter, we've learned that they go out for dinner every night. Her father does not cook or own pot slash pans, and her father tells her that she is the adult in the house and she gets to choose what they do. He's created a monster and it's just going to get worse as she hits the teenage years. Maybe that's what he wanted all along. I won't specify who because this isn't a throwaway, but I know a girl, we'll call the leech princess, whom the title spoiled rotten would be an understatement. Here's just a small slice of what I've experienced, say you're 18 plus and you finally moved out and got a new place, your family even gives you the money for first month's rent, security deposit, basically everything you'd need for the first two months or so, and the only catch is that you do what any normal person would do, get a job, and keep your apartment. So what does she do? 
parties with her friends in the apartment day after day, asks for more money not even a week after moving in because she's blown the previous amount given and hasn't got a job yet. Cue a few weeks of asking for weekly money and friends partying in the house. She now has all of the tenants around her, every connecting wall, and even across from her, threatening to move out because of how loud and disruptive she is. The landlord gives her a warning. That's lucky, if I had multiple tenants threatening to move out due to one, I'd have kicked her out then and there, but I digress. What does she do? Continues to not get a job or even search for one, and continues to invite her friends over and party, and trash the apartment some more. Then it gets better, a week later and now there's a lady with two kids who's threatening the landlord to void their lease and just leave, because she can't sleep, and doesn't feel safe with the type of people leech princess is bringing over, LP has a lot of dumb, big rowdy friends. So the landlord give her another warning, to keep the noise down, clean up the apartment, and get her sheet together. What does leech princess do? I mean, you'd think, wow got a second chance after all that, hell she definitely learned her lesson right. Wrong. Less than a week later she's now getting evicted because she trashed the apartment and continued to let her friends come over and party past 2am and is now moving back in with her mom. To top it off, we now get to hold all her stuff in our garage because we live in town so it'd be easier to move and keep there until she decides whether or not she's permanently moving back into her mother's out of town, you know why. My fiancé and her share a mother. My best friend's sister is the epitome of spoiled rotten. She has had mental health issues which I'm obviously sensitive to, but they take spoiling her to an all new level. My best friend, Martha, went to a public school in a big city. Her sister, Alex, went to a very expensive private school. Alex also was an elite junior gymnast that racked up tens of thousands of dollars a year. Martha didn't really mind though, because she was really good, and she was used to Alex getting better treatment anyways. A few years ago Alex graduated and still has yet to work over 20 hours a week or further her education. She has been given new cars every time she crashes one, even though Martha drives a car with one different color door that she bought herself. I was over Martha's a few months ago, and she casually mentioned her boyfriend with Alex in the room. Alex got pissed and screamed in her face that she doesn't care and that she's trying to rub it in her face since she's single and Martha got yelled at by her mom for it. We went to a concert together this summer and Alex was pissed at us the entire time because we took too long going to the bathroom. It's a concert venue, of course the lines are long. Their dad recently had surgery, so Martha is expected to wake up, take the dogs out for a walk at 430am, cook and clean 5 times a week, and wake up Alex on time so they can get to work. Before the surgery Martha did these things, but with help from her dad. They work at the same place at the same time in the mornings, but Alex isn't required to do any of it. Martha brought up the disparity to her mom a few months ago, and her mom basically told her that she is on team B as far as family hierarchy goes. I could go on and on but these are the basic things that I've observed over time. Context here. I went to an exclusive school for boys for 10 years and generally rub elbows with the children of the rich, influential, and locally famous people, and these kids were spoiled, but not spoiled rotten. I was a middle to upper middle class boy studying in the same grade as most of these guys with money. There was one particular faker I remember that no one liked. He was an as above all other as whole so everyone stood clear of him. Let me call him J.A.Y. Jay was a mediocre violinist who thought himself being the best, he loved posting his work on YouTube, his grades were fine, some subjects he couldn't pass, so he paid for those, very common there, what no one liked about Jay was, that he would annoy the crap out of anyone, that got near him. He would constantly brag about his gigs as a wedding band, his love for a certain artist, he even got her signature on his violin case for goodness sake, and brag about drinking wine, we were 14 at the time. Most of us were too young to have developed a palette for alcoholic drinks. The story, fast forward to high school graduation. Jay didn't make the cut, since he was too lazy to compile and organize the requirements for graduation. So Jay in his anger sues the school. He won the case, gets his diploma, and at the same time, dishonor a 50-year-old institution. Last I heard of Jay, 
he was studying in an all-girls college that was recently turned co-ed and was bragging about his harem. He isn't as bad as many of the stories here, but I just wanted to let it out. When I turned 16 years old I purchased a bright orange Porsche Baxter. I was very proud of what I had purchased and had been working throughout my entire childhood. My dad told me to make good decisions with the money I earned. However, I did what a 16 year old with money would do. I did not realize that the majority of the school wouldn't realize I was the person who purchased the car. I was harassed, my family got harassed so hard that I almost left school. I was so completely embarrassed for the things people said about my family because of my purchase. They accused my father of being in the mafia, my mom was accused of being a hoker. I was accused of being a hoker. Honestly, I scrolled through this looking to make sure nobody was posting about the girl with the orange and black Porsche convertible. I know, slash poor little rich girl first world problems a few years later, an old lady came across three lanes and slammed into the car. I had to have back surgery and I have perm damage. People from school said I deserved it because of the car. Yeah. Not relating to any rich kids I knew in school or in college, but rather what someone left in their dorm room freshman year. There was a guy who lived down the hall from me who, like most students, kept a mini fridge in his single room. Well, this dude was, shall we say, scatterbrained. He was a huge environmentalist who would unplug his electronics, but was also known to be a bit of a slob who would forget to clean up his space. Well it's the end of the winter holidays, and the students on my floor come back to find this nauseating stench lurking in the hallways. It was so bad, there were students ducking for cover in the bathrooms and blowing chunks in any available toilet cubicle or shower stall or sink. All because Stinky the hippie forgot to clean out his min fridge before unplugging it for the break. So we had curdled dairy products festering in yogurt cups, ice cream tubs and milk cartons, moldy tofu that resembled chunks of a straw turf, organic fruits and vegetables that look more at home in Alexander Fleming's laboratory than a farmer's market, etc. It was weeks before the hallway stopped smelling like rot masked by a Febreze fog. This kid that belonged to a family friend. She didn't live with her dad, and her mother just didn't give a sheet about her. She was an absolute spoiled brat. First my aunt owned a beauty shop. I began working there at 14, and this kid had been going there since she was little. She always fidgeted and whined. At first her mom tried to do something about her, but as time went on she just stopped giving a sheet. Until she had a 12 year old that fidgeted, kicked her feet, and whined the whole time. Then my aunt opened a small gift shop. This girl came in one day, bought a toy, and then promptly broke it. My aunt had me manning the station, and I caught her trying to switch it out with a non-broken one. I told her she couldn't do that, so she wanted an exchange. There were clear signs around no refunds or exchanges. She literally planted herself in the store and began screaming at the top of her head. The worst part about this is that my aunt didn't even back me up. She apologized to her mom for my behavior. Fuck you, Sha, and oh of course kid could exchange the toy, the sign didn't apply to them. The icing on the cake, and the last time I saw this kid, was a couple of years later. By this time she was 16 ish, and I was visiting from college. Her father was going to visit us, but I don't remember why. I was finishing up showering when they came, and I heard aloud well I need to pee. When the kid found the door was locked she began to bang on the door, saying she was going to pee her pants if I didn't hurry up and get out. Now my mom used to spank me until it hurt to sit. She calmed down a bit since I was a kid, but I heard that old tone of her voice crop up. She growled there's a second bathroom, and the girl stomped off to my mom's bathroom. Did the dad say anything? No, he acted like the meek sheet that made this girl into who she is. I haven't seen her since, but I can only imagine what she's like a decade later. I can think of a few, but two really stick out in my mind. When I first started college, I was dirt poor. I had no car. I had to be driven to school by my dad in the morning, and I had to wait until super late at night to be picked up by him. I didn't have money to buy lunch in the cafeteria, so I took out extra student loans to have money to do so couldn't get a job because of the no car thing. 
sitting in one of my classes, I hear a girl in the background talking about how her parents got her a car. Not like for her birthday or anything, just bought her a car just because. But she was complaining about it. Why? It had the wrong cup holders. Second being a bit bigger of a deal. One of my ex-girlfriends had a brother who was the most spoiled kid on the planet. When I met him, he was like 14, but I knew him until he started going to college. This kid would never do chores. Always whine about stuff. Constantly get his way regardless of all of that. Ex's mom treated him like a prince, but constantly treated us like the help. Kid got into fights all the time, did drugs, brought drugs at school and got caught, and then blamed on someone from his rival dance crew. Got away with all of it and then some. His mom bought him a car, but never bought one for my ex. When it came time to get rid of ex's mom's old car, because she bought a new one, brother sold his car and ex's mom gave him her old car. Don't bother giving your daughter a car, so she can stop relying entirely on you and her boyfriend for rides to college and work and stuff. No. That kid is gonna wind up in jail someday. Oh man. I'm a little late to the party for this one, but I have to participate. When I was in my mid-twenties, and my younger sister was about five my parents were super excited for Christmas morning. Since this would be the first one my sister could really form long-lasting memories of, my parents wanted it to be perfect. So myself, my husband, my other adult siblings, and the entire extended family were instructed to be at my parents' house at 6 freaking am just in case the perfect little angel woke up early. That way, she could open presents immediately and be surrounded by family. Well, said younger sibling, doesn't even wake up until about 8.30, and upon waking up and seeing that everyone is doting on my youngest sister, about 8 months old at the time, decides to throw a full-on diva tantrum. She barricades herself in her bedroom, stacking every toy and piece of furniture that she can move against the door, and starts screaming that she doesn't want Christmas, and that it is stupid, and that everyone needs to go away. Now, you would think that at this point the rest of the family would open their presents, maybe have some breakfast, and go on about their day, until she decided to resurface. But no, we were not allowed to eat, open presents, or really do anything until my stepmother finally carried her back downstairs and personally helped her open every present. All told we didn't even get started until about noon. I don't know if it even applies. But I'm spoiled by my parents. Counts as the worst case I've seen lol but it's weird. I don't know how to word it well, but I'll give you an example. When they go out to eat, and I stay at home, they ask me what should they bring me, only to bring something different from what I asked. I know that they do it, because they think I'd like it more, but it gets annoying when it happens way too often, and more often than not they aren't right. It's like a person telling you, if you like butter, you say yes, and then they bring you peanut butter. I have told them politely to not bring me something else, unless that thing is not available, or is too expensive. Them deciding for me what I want, or asking me only to not take what I said into account. It just gets tiring. It doesn't happen just with food though, but food is the only thing I can be vocal about without feeling guilty, and like I'm a piece of shit. It doesn't help that they are overprotective, and when they do it, it feels as if I'm suffocating. And at the same time I feel guilty, because I should be thankful that they do it, and while I partly am, it conflicts with wanting more freedom and to be able to do more stuff on my own, and take control of some aspects of my life for once. Sorry for the rant. Edit, before anyone says anything, this is the only thing I do that might be spoiled. I do not ask for stuff, unless they offer to pay, I always check prices of the stuff I would like, discarding things that are too pricey. I save up, and buy my own stuff too. My first cousin. He lived with his mother and sisters during the time he got a girl pregnant. Moved her in. She was a good girl, nothing off about her. Eventually he got comfortable with bringing over any of his friends of any age, literally. Some up to ages 40, to his mother's house, three bedrooms, for drinks, which his mother hated. She would always yell at him and his friends and kick them out, but they always managed to keep coming back to party. Fast forward a few months, his mom gets so tired of his ways that she moved out of her house of 8 years to a smaller home, 
two bedrooms she purposely got in order to force him and his little family to get their own place. They were doing very good for a while being on their own, baby was barely a year old. But by the time his baby turned one, he got back into his old ways and began to invite over literally anybody who was willing to bring drinks. He totaled two of their cars in two years from drunk driving, can't keep a job worth sheet, always quits after first paycheck, spend most of their survival money on wed and alcohol. It got to the point where every payday his mother had, she would stock up their entire apartment with food. Food that he fed to his drinking buddies when he invites them over to get faked up. Usually a young mother of 19 to a 1 year old, mother of his child, would be at home caring for the child, but his habits forced her to get a job of her own and come home after spending a whole day at work to care for her kid all night while he was out drinking. Eventually he became another child for her to care for. Fast forward a years or two and she eventually left him. Nowadays he is basically homeless and always drunk. He tried to return to his mother's house, but his mother's boyfriend hates him so much that he tried numerous times to keep him out of the house, but his mother continued to enable him and sneak him into the house to sleep in the girl's room when he needed rest. After a while, his mother's boyfriend found him sleeping in the girl's room and packed his sheet and moved out. Now, his mother moved out of the house as well, but she still pays for everything, and he is still going to that house any time he wants to shower and eat or whatever else. Yet he still doesn't live there and is still always out drinking. She demanded back the house key once, and he threw a fit saying stuff like, Wow mom I'm your son. You can't do that to me. SMH. Can't spoil your kid rotten, and then ask yourself why they are the way they are. Once they grow into adults, they are irresponsible and won't ever learn how to live independently. I was in a different department of the store when this happened, but my friend and I went shopping, and while I was gone my friend told me there was this mother and a kid the kid maybe like 5 or 6 began to cry, and whine and the mother just stood there like please don't cry I'll get you anything you want. I understand that this isn't as bad as some of the stories here, but believe me, that kid is going to probably grow up to be one of these stories. Edit. Wait I remember my family friend's son he's maybe like 25 or 27 now the family has like 4 other sons too are mostly okay guys who have their own apartment slash house one I think has his own apartment the son I'm talking about I think may be in the middle or is the youngest so the wife used to own a trailer like a trailer for living in not like a small one for summer camp. The family got a house later but never sold the trailer, so the son is living in it, but he didn't get a spot in a trailer park or anything, he like lived in parking lots and stuff. I think he was at one time arrested for loitering or something, because people understandably get annoyed when you live in the parking lot of like Walmart or whatever store lot he was at he was I believe arrested for that, but his mom just paid bail, and he got out then he started to bug his mom for money, which she gave him, and then tried to move in with his older brother who had a small house and a job this brother said no I think no one other. Then the one brother ever told him no to anything. He just kept doing dumb stuff and his mom kept bailing him out of situations I think he now lives with the other brother that has an apartment in Texas I haven't heard anything about him for a while. I had this Nepalese roommate in college whose family was very rich. They sent him dollar sign 4k every 4 months or so for spending money. His parents paid for school and rent separately. He was in love with American consumerism and blew all the money on stupid sheet, then begged his parents to send him another check early when he ran dry. Things he bought off the top of my head. Two MacBook Pros, because reasons, dollar sign 2k mountain bike, he didn't mountain bike, several nice guitars along with a dozen fancy guitar pedals plus multiple amps, he soaked, a lot, dozens of born DVDs plus various such toys. He never got laid, a prostitute, except that one time. The list goes on. The best thing he blew money however, were his tattoos. They were as generic as you can get. Tribal markings on the sides of his head, flames going up each forearm, and Chinese lettering on his legs. They were awful, and I laughed in his face every time he came back with a new one. Anyways, as you can imagine he wasn't a very good student either. He failed classes multiple times, easy ones. This was at a for-profit school, so his parents were getting diced for like 2 grand every time he failed a course. 
The school claimed, if you failed a course three times, you get booted out. Well, apparently they make exceptions for the students who can keep the money flowing. He started four months before me in the same major, and by the time he finally got cut off by his parents and dropped out, I was almost done with school, while he was maybe halfway through. He had probably cost them nearly $80k by that point. I dunno what happened to that guy, but he was certainly the definition of a colossally spoiled fuck up. Okay, so this isn't exactly the same as the rest of these, because the kid wasn't exactly getting extreme sheet, but his mom's was dirt poor. I mean like Brownsville, Brooklyn project buildings in the 1990s poor. He got into LaGuardia High School, one of the best arts high schools in America, let alone New York City, and so I guess he started hanging out with wealthier kids and got jealous. He would go crazy at his poor mom when she wouldn't buy him what he wanted. This kid was like 15, and he would hit his mom and curse her out when she didn't buy him the clothing he wanted. One time he saw a kid had a lav lamp, and I remember him asking her to get it, and she said she only had $11 to her name for the week and he went nuts, calling her poor and dirty and too stupid to afford anything. Then he started just yelling and screaming for her to hand over the $11, saying you don't deserve this sheet, you don't deserve this sheet while hitting her, and throwing her around, and taking the money. The mom would just sit there and hysterically cry, she had no response to such horrible sheet from her son. This was like, maybe one of five instances where this happened. I hung out with him a lot at his apartment, he was brutal. He would ask her to buy stuff she obviously couldn't afford like Jordans, and when she silently said no he would hit her and start going in on her that she was a pathetic poor person. I dreaded when she came home while I was there for the sheer embarrassment of witnessing that. That kid was just a straight bully. He thought of himself as so rich and pompous compared to his ghetto parents, and I'm just like bro, you are raised in the same project building as them. I remember the day he started to talk proper instead of his regular black accent, and it was like a month into going to LaGuardia. It just got worse and worse after that. I honestly think he developed some form of severe mental disorder related to that. Just thinking about the times I went over his house and he would abuse his mother in front of me still makes me get a bit angry. He thought he was such pampered and wealthy sheet, as if he was really rich on the inside. It doesn't matter today, he became a heroin addict when we were both like 19. Not like ghetto heroin addict, like art school heroin addict, so I'm sure he still tried convincing himself he was among the gentry, even when he was living in a squat with homeless artists. Fuck that kid. As a former teacher, I have seen some spoiled rotten kids, and not necessarily by money, just entitled kids who think I owe them everything. I had a student who had anger issues and she would skip class all the time to smoke pot. I had a 5 minute journal segment at the beginning of class that kids would turn in each quarter. I was very clear that, if you missed a day, you were supposed to ask someone for the prompt. T. He swore easy 2 point each grade boosters. The day the journals are due, she comes prancing in and demands that I give her all the journal questions she missed. She had an IEP and would get extra time on tests. So she claimed that she got extra time for the journal questions. She was used to teachers caving in, but I held firm and said that her journal was due the same as everyone else, since this didn't mean her need for extra time and she should have been doing them each day. Though I did give her a list of journal prompts, even though her absences were unexcused. The girl went psychotic on me and ran out of the classroom screaming. Thankfully her special education teacher backed me up on it. The worst part was that I couldn't punish her for her attitude. Because of her IEP, she had to be told to leave the room during an outburst. If she came back in to continue, I could punish her. Whatever. And guess what? The girl came back later that day with all the journal prompts completed. When I was a kid, I really wanted a hermit crab. The my favorite animal is type of thing you have going on at early ages. I would go to a local garden market type place that had pets, and I'd stare in at the hermit crabs they had for sale. So, I told the kid next door at one point that I really want one, and that store is where they have them. Just casual conversation stuff. Kid shouts to his mom that he wants to go to that shop, and two, I'll never forget the words, bring money. Next time I see the neighbor, he has a hermit crab from that store. It dies within days. 
he gets another. Within days, another, and another. From then on, every time I went to the shop, I could visibly see the hermits dwindling in numbers as he killed them off through neglect or whatever else. He wasn't necessarily sadistic. Just spoiled. I never really mentioned it until now, when I was a kid, I felt responsible, as if I had caused them to die, by telling this kid they existed and where to find them. Was no indicator there'd be a problem, he'd never had any small pets before to take note of. Some here would probably still blame me. Ah, internet. XDTLDR, tell neighbor kid I like hermit crabs. Based on that alone, he wants them, repeatedly kills them. Knew a girl who was beautiful, smart, and came from a rich family. In high school she got straight as, and looked like she was going places. Then she joined the party scene, on her parents dime, and stuff went downhill. Her parents gave her a new BMW with all of the bells and whistles. She totaled it by driving drunk. Her parents gave her a brand new Honda Accord V8 with all of the bells and whistles. She got enough DUIs to warrant, having a breathalyzer installed in her car. She then totaled her car by driving drunk again. Her parents then tried to teach her a lesson by only giving her a used Mercedes, again with all the bells and whistles. In the meantime, she slept around without protection and used abortions as birth control. All while she was technically dating this guy who loves her to death, a guy who worked full time to support her lifestyle, she just broke up with him every so often to go on a break and sleep with other men, so it technically wasn't cheating. She got pregnant again, but decided not to abort. She gave birth, and vowed to be a good mother, I respected this, and thought she was going to turn her life around. Instead, when the kid was a few months old, she went back to her her partying lifestyle. Eventually, she odd on something, and barely escaped with her life. She is now blind, has no hair, has severe amnesia, cannot talk, and is bedbound. I used to hate her, but now I don't feel anything towards her, I only feel pity for her child. My ex's little sister. It wasn't so much being spoiled that bothered me, it was how she and everyone else acted that brought it over the top. This little girl was only 10 years old, but she may as well have been a dictator to an entire house full of adults. The only one who actually recognized what a brat she was was the mom, but she worked 10 to 10 and was never around the rest of the family to squash the behavior. For example, this girl would smash her tablet on purpose and her dad would immediately go out and buy a new one. He bought her a laptop for Christmas and when she saw my ex's laptop she threw a fit until she got the exact same one instead. She would even break other people's electronics too. All day, every day, whatever she wanted she got even food was a tyrannical situation. The thing that really sent me over the edge though, was that one day we drove 3 hours to go on a family trip to an aquarium and beach. We finish at the aquarium and there is this amazing line of pier shops surrounding it, everyone wants to look at. Except her. Because she had ballet class that night and was throwing a temper tantrum that she was worried she would be late. Mind you. She wasn't even actually going to be late, she just decided to freak out. And there it was, his dad corralled everyone, and forced us all back home on the spot, because she didn't want to be late for a ballet class. I was furious, and I definitely ended up making a snippy remark about it, because I was fed up at that point. After that the dad made it his life mission to break me, and his son up, and obviously succeeded Lameo. No joke, every day thereafter he would full blown try to convince my ex I had to be cheating on him until my ex got so psychotic about it our relationship was irreparable. One Christmas when I was younger, probably middle school I want to say, lived around the corner from this rather large slag of a girl. She at Christmas, received a flat screen TV, jewelry, gift cards, cash, games, cloths, you name it, she got it in some form. Anyway some of us got fair gifts from family friends, I of course only got one gift due to having it secretly given to me due to at the time, my religion. And how I loved it as I hardly got any gift, let alone one for Christmas. So this girl is as you guessed it unhappy with all the gifts she has received, saying none of these gifts are great I didn't get anything I wanted so it's all going back to the store. So I can get what I want she already dropped the TV out her second story bedroom window in a fit of disagreeableness. So I say to her, 
Well you should be happy you got what you got as some of us get very few gifts her response was, if I can remember you only got one gift, because you're a poor sack of sheet. Naturally at the age you cry, and of course she turned it around saying you're only crying, because you're an ungrateful person rest of the kids in the neighborhood, were well to put it nicely they were upset, vengeful really as other than myself they got 3 to 5 gifts each, and usually swapped with each other, anyway. Here's a kicker she got annoyed when no one swapped with her, and one person said why swap, what you won't appreciate. Me and my guy friend, although I want to be his girlfriend. He had hit a period of roughness, I think, but him being adorable I took him in, by this, he stayed the night with me for 5 days. Anyways, I bought him 2 things of vodka, probably 60 plus beers, Jaja Meister, Fireball, and he drank my wine, in the course of 2 weeks or so. Anyways, for his birthday, I bought some of that alcohol, plus bought him sushi slash pizza slash pizza puffs and flowers, and took him and a friend out to Chinese, then we laid around for 5 days, I bought us Battlefield 4. We played all day, slept till 3 p.m., and stayed up until 3 a.m. Oh did I mention, I cleaned his face, and put a face mask on him? All the while, him chilling in a bathrobe in my room. I took one look at him, and said you're spoiled, but not as much as I want you to be. And he was like nah, uh, it was lovely, and I was so mad he wanted to go home for a few days. I offered to do his laundry, buy him some new clothes. But he wanted to stay somewhere else. So when he came back, I started an argument with him, and told him to leave. Not really wanting him to go though, you know. But he gladly left, and I was more mad. He won't speak to me anymore, even though he did leave a comment on my Facebook post about Muslims, in which I did not respond to Oh, and he was even messaging some, well, gross girls, no offense to anyone. And one message was even like him, Rudd, huh, going to court, for being in trouble. One girl said she was drunk driving one night. I promptly told them that he has a girlfriend and wasn't interested. He was pretty mad, he said something like invasion of privacy and I laughed really hard. Grew up with this kid in the Bay Area, who got everything he wanted. Let's start in senior year of high school, he had a tantrum and ripped the side mirror off of his mom's BMW because his parents wouldn't buy him a 55 inches Samsung TV. They bought him the TV. It was bigger than the one in their living room. He didn't get into a college up to his standards, so he went to Santa Barbara Community College in hopes of transferring to UXB eventually. Halo 3 came out at the same time he moved to Santa Barbara, so instead of going to class, he used his dad's credit card to spend a couple thousand dollars on wet and played non-stop for a month straight. He dropped out of school and came home. Then they got him his own to bedroom condo in San Luis Obispo, he started taking classes at the CC there, and dropped out after the first quarter. Then he came home. He had been driving a nice Honda Accord since high school, so he felt it was time to get a better car. So he made his dad sell his BMW, in order to buy him a Merced C55 AMG, which was more expensive, than what he sold. Then he cashed in his only acceptance letter for college at Oregon State University, moved to Oregon, got an apartment up there, faked up in classes again, flooded his apartment by leaving the sink on, and clogging the hole in the sink, by leaving a wet shirt accidentally over it, got evicted, moved back home, decided to take up skateboarding that summer, his parents bought him the nicest mini ramp you could buy, and they put it in the backyard. When winter came, he decided he wanted to become a snowboarder. His parents got him a house in Vail, Colorado and let him snowboard all winter, then he came back, skated and smoked for a couple months more, decided he wanted to snowboard in North Dakota, or somewhere up north. They got him a house, to live in for the season, he did that, and then came back again. Most recently, they bought him a condo in Tahoe, which he lives in rent-free, his dad helped him convert the second bedroom into a grow room, and all he does now is snowboard and drink at the mountain pub, where he has his own special mug, because he's king of the mountain. As much as I would love to talk about some bad habits my older sister has, and how it is driving my father mad, I prefer to think my parents learned a few things along the way, that were applied to me still didn't stop me from being a spoiled brat. 
This happened a few years after my mom passed away from cancer and my dad suddenly had to do parenting instead of working overtime all the day to pay for the family needs. The poor guy had a real hard time communicating in general, so it was worse during those years when all three of us weren't feeling too good. It happened a bit after my sister had left the familial nest, leaving the basement. Our house's second floor had three rooms, master bedroom, my room, office. I'm mostly a late worker slash gamer, so I tended to stop early in the morning, thus bothering my father who was trying to sleep. With the now vacant basement, I wanted it as my new room. My father proposed to install both the office and my room in the basement to avoid having me travel two flight of stairs in the middle of the night. Being the brat I am, I obviously made a fuss out of it, stating that having both sleep slash relax station near my workstation would have a negative influence on my studies etc etc. After many arguments, I believe he gave up, so the office went downstairs, while my room remained upstairs. A few months later I moved out, eventually ending up in a small apartment with my workstation, being squeezed into my room with only enough space to sit in a chair and somehow reach the door from behind one of the desks. I think it made me work more efficiently when animating, but the constant naps might say otherwise. Moving out helped me realize quite a few things, which was for the best. TLDR was a brat, wanted vacant basement as a bedroom, father wanted to make it into bedroom slash office so that I wouldn't wake him up during the night, made a fuss and got the basement as an office, still waking him up during the night, later left the house and realized how much of a brat I was. Edit 1, need to learn how to format edit 2, added TLDR edit 3, still don't know how to format. My sister fits this question. While she isn't as bad as some of the stories I'm seeing here, she's been a real sheet of a person throughout most of her life. The one that tops everything else she's ever done was posting a picture of her hugging my grandmother's Lexus Sav, used but in very nice condition, she had just recently purchased for herself on Instagram with a caption that reads see what hard work gets you. First of all, my sister has never been able to stick to anything in her life. It is a genuine surprise to me how she managed to graduate with all of her school night parties, drug habits, and almost non-existent work ethic. After she miraculously graduated, she moved from my father's place to my mother's. My mom enrolled her in esthetician school, completely paid for it, bought her a used car, and told her the only thing she needed to pay was insurance and gas. My sister refused to get even a part-time job, allowing her to pay for maybe $200 monthly on a vehicle she wasn't even paying for. She butcher constantly about my mother and her refusal to help her. I'm not a fan of my mom herself, but she certainly did a metric fact and for my sister to do basically whatever she wanted. Fast forward to major fighting between them, and she's living in a condo on the waterfront just south of Seattle. She buys a dog who subsequently destroys the condo. My grandmother, after my grandfather passed away, went to sell the condo and needed to make about $15k worth of repairs. Fast forward more and more fuck ups and fouls on my sister's end and she's moving back to my mother's place where my grandmother has also moved. My grandmother gave her her own $40,000 truck so she could have something to drive. My sister didn't work for any of the sheets she's had in her life for all the things she has faked up, or people she has screwed over. The chances of her expecting my grandmother to give her that sub and manipulating her into doing so are pretty high. I haven't talked to her in a couple of years and have largely cut her and my mother out of my life, but that's a different story for a different day. An ex-girlfriend took me to situate Massachusetts because her mom's best friend and her family live there. They live in this gorgeous enormous house, and while we were staying there, they were planning something like a $300,000 renovation to extend the living room by 3 feet. Her husband did company mergers and acquisitions or something like that for multiple major Fortune 500 companies. He had a business call while we were there that, I was told, included Warren Buffett. That's the type of rich. Anyway, she grew up in northeast Pennsylvania and seemingly immediately forgot where she came from when she married this dude. She kept going on about how inhumane hunting was and that, if you were so poor that hunting was a source of food maybe you should work harder. 
She also started talking shit on how depressed people that she and my ex's mom went to high school with, and if they just did something nice for themselves, like remodel their homes, they'd feel so much better. If anyone knows anything about Nipa, you know hunting's pretty popular and important to the area, and the area is broke as fuck. We are third in the nation in binge drinking, second in tobacco consumption, we are ranked as the most depressed metropolitan area in the country, we have a raging opioid epidemic and crime problems, and the recession virtually never left the area. This lady really thinks, putting new siding on your faking house is gonna fix problems. I couldn't keep my mouth shut while I was there. I think I was very reasonable when I challenged her on these notions, but my ex's mom was so faking angry at me for a long time afterwards. Edit. Also, she doesn't work. A friend of mine apparently told me she had three cars, the oldest being some stupid little white 2013 Ford. This was told to me in 2015, mind you. She tells me her first car was a 2014 Mazda something, and she totaled it driving a just a little high and stuff, by crashing into a fire extinguisher. Second car was the 2013, that she also totaled, this time via light pole. Third car is a 2015 Audi, and she complained to me, that my mom and dad won't let me get my car until second semester, it sucks getting rides everywhere, and taking the bus. Being the kind friend I am, I just told her that the car wasn't even hers, if the title was in someone else's name, so they can total it, if they wanted to, and reminded her, that she's rode the bus once, even though all students from the university and CC get unlimited free rides using their ID. Oh, then she complains, that she has a roommate in the nicest dorms on campus, and ended up moving to some weird student houses that are slightly farther from campus, closer downtown, but more secure and way better. It's still set up like a dorm though and almost dollar sign 4k a semester. Same girl who then complained, that her parents won't get her the newest 2017 Audi or something, and kind of wants to total my car, so they get me a new one. She even gets around $250 to $300 a month of spending money from her parents. This doesn't include her clothes shopping budget. And she doesn't work because she enjoys partying more and thinks her first few years should be just relaxing and not worrying about things. She's nice and all, but literally a spoiled brat and that's the reason I just ignored every single advance she made when we had classes together. I work in a Barnes and Noble cafe and this friggin mom came in with her two boys and her husband. These kids probably weren't any older than 8 and 9 at the time. First, the older of the two steals the younger boy's hat right off of his head and they literally start chasing one another around the mom in circles while she's trying to get them both to stop and pick one cookie each. The dad just stands there watching it all happen. After a few minutes he just shrugs and wanders off to another part of the store without a single word. So the mom finally steals the hat from the older boy and makes him decide. He grabs a juice box out of our beverage case, picks his cookie, and runs off to find dad. Great. That leaves the younger boy. That ungrateful little sheet says he's getting both a blondie and a chocolate chip cookie. He doesn't ask politely, he doesn't say please, he demands it because, and I quote, because I can, and you won't do anything about it. The mom says, very calmly and nicely, no, sweetie, you can only have one. He then proceeds to literally throw himself onto the floor and kick and scream that he wants both. So the faking mom picks him up, dusts him off, and asks him, again, which one he wants. Now, truthfully, were they my kids, I wouldn't have gotten either of them anything after all of the hat nonsense, but the older boy was gone at this point and he stopped when asked. So at least there was that. So she just gets the younger boy the chocolate chip cookie because he wouldn't decide and she pays for it and then the little fack starts sobbing because he wants the blondie too. So she faking buys that too. I have never in my whole life been more embarrassed for someone. The sad part is she did it to herself by giving in and it became very apparent to me who runs their family. It obviously isn't the parents. I will never forget that day. I'm still in disbelief at how those kids treated her. Unreal. Being super stalking. Despite the obvious, the stalkers simply smile and lol without an intelligent word or thought communicated as to answering for themselves. 
They feel entitled to witness every intimate detail in my life, my kids' life. My friends then make the arduous leap of picking and choosing the imperfections they find to insult me and make fun of my kid. Entitlement at its worst. Lowest form of life. They haven't issued a single piece of clear communication, other than insults, that are as mindless as fat jokes, however trying to figure out what the fact they want after months, I'm sure they would say they want to make me be responsible. I would agree that I need to become a responsible parent and adult again, no argument there, as I'm struggling with drug addiction, but I'm sure that's just the excuse they use trying to deflect their responsibility for committing what I consider to be one of the most revolting and spineless acts a person can commit. The idea that a grown adult would spy on a 12 years old boy hanging out with friends, family or when he's alone in private, when he believes he is in a safe place, is repulsive, then add on to that they mock him, highlighting his obvious physical weaknesses, waiting and watching like hearness for another opportunity. They find themselves above the law and common decency 99% of society lives by voluntarily. Apparently God put them on this earth to judge others and take it upon themselves to make entertainment of it while torturing. They are either too dumb and ignorant to realize this harassment does not help me be responsible again, but presents an obstacle to doing so, or they are among the lowest of society and simply don't care that their juvenile insults, 24-hour invasion and violation of basic human rights is complicating a significant life event of a child. It wouldn't take a good person to make a small effort to assist that child in this situation, let alone simply make no effort at all to just stay out of the way, yet these entitled brats, we'll call them, if we are being nice, actually put forth effort to make the situation worse and do so knowingly and have been doing so for months. I'm late here, but when I was like 8 years old there was this Jehovah's Witness girl I was best friends with. Sometimes we would hang out with her brother too. Let's call her Sarah and her brother can be Sam. Ironically, Sarah and Sam were given whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted it by her family. Their parents saw them both as perfect little angels and put them up on this huge pedestal, which is a bit odd given the fact that their religion seems to circle around utmost humility but I digress. They weren't very wealthy at all, though I suppose the fact that they didn't celebrate Christmas or birthdays had something to do with it, because despite their income, if Sarah wanted a new doll, the new dress, expensive shoes, she'd get whatever it was. Immediately. I remember in our little clique of friends, we would always meet in the school library after class and play with the dolls and other toys we hid in our backpacks. Most of us would borrow toys from each other and then return them the next time we saw each other. It was super fun, but Sarah would never let anyone borrow her toys. I was okay with that, but I would always ask her anyways, especially since I wanted to borrow her limited edition littlest pet shop toy. She always refused, needless to say. Well, that was alright, but then there was this other girl in our clique, let's call her Anna who asked Sarah, right in front of me, if she could borrow Sarah's limited edition littlest pet shop. Sarah agreed cheerfully, and also gave Anna a good amount of her expensive jewelry. It hurt a lot at the time, haha, <laughs> even though it's super petty and pretty funny now. She was really a spoiled brat who liked excluding people on purpose and seriously played favorites with her friends. On another occasion, Sarah brought a bunch of her Polly Pocket dolls to school, when suddenly she lost one of them. Instantly her overprotective, doting mother came rushing over and searched all of our backpacks without asking us first and basically interrogating every single one of Sarah's friends. Eventually the mother, after violating our belongings, came to the unfounded conclusion that one of the other girls in the clique, gonna call her Katie, had stolen Sarah's doll. Poor Katie was bullied so badly that she had to switch schools. She was constantly ridiculed by most of the students, since Sarah had told everyone about what happened. Sarah's mother had told her to never speak to Sarah or Sam again. Katie was also black, so I suspect this may have been out of racism as I have no clue how they could have thought she stole it but once again, I digress. Well later on they actually found the doll in Sam's backpack, but he fed his parents some bullshit story that he had stolen it back from Katie and needless to say they believed it, because in their eyes Sam is a perfect angel who could do no wrong. A few months later Sarah and I had a falling out that was heavily influenced by their parents, 
the mother discouraged her from interacting with me since my family is Wiccan and they thought I would curse their kids or something. Long story. They go to my high school now. Sam is dumb as dirt, but also super manipulative when he bothers to use his brain, and not to mention pretentious. He thinks he can get away with anything, so does the rest of the family, really, they all still have a grudge against me for some weird reason, and are constantly glaring at me, and letting doors slam in my face. I've gotten a bunch of nasty anonymous notes as well, that I'm certain are from them, since basically everyone else at my school is pretty nice. Apparently his mother threw a tantrum because one of the teachers tried to make him leave gasp actual work. She also got caught trying to do Sarah's homework for her. I cringe to think about what Sarah and Sam's lives will be like when they are adults. They are just so sheltered and spoiled. It hurts my soul. My wife's cousin. Her aunt has two kids, a son and a daughter. Daughter is very down to earth, has a PhD etc. Son is just a state. First time I met him, we were visiting him because he had moved to my hometown to be with his pregnant girlfriend. He was 17, she was about 18 to 19, both unemployed. Aunt had put them up in a very expensive flat in a gated community. Sitting in the living room he had a brand new top of the range iMac and MacBook, a 50 inch plasma, top of the range at the time, a Sky Plus box, a PS3 and 5 phones on the coffee table, 3 iPhones and 2 Blackberries. Guy was trying to become a web dev, with no training or support. Having been there, done that, I tried to give him some help, lending him my old training books, that he never read, MLs with useful links, never opened, and helping him out with projects, including bailing him out of a project he totally faked up, which he said he'd pay me for but never did. His wife later left him, taking their daughter, and shacked up with her old boyfriend instead, which was kind of sad. A while later my cousin's husband, who was just starting his own web business, hit my up with a job offer. I told him quite rightly that he couldn't afford me right away and suggested that my wife's cousin might be a good fit for the small amount of work he had that needed doing. Both seemed happy with the situation. I later came to work for the company and found out that he had been refusing to work unless the boss bought him cookies in the morning and pizza for lunch, was spending most his time working on his personal website instead of company projects, and when he was doing work it was sufficiently sloppy and unfinished that my job was pretty much fixing his sites full time. Bear in mind that we were working 10 to 6, with him only working 3 days a week. I was picking him up from his enormous rented three bedroom house as he had never bothered to learn to drive and dropping him off. He had an easy job, well paid, an excellent boss and lots of learning opportunities and for some reason loads of free pizza and cookies. He quit giving no notice because I don't have to work because my mum gives me money for things. I'm gonna go on a long winded rant on this one. Lived at a friend's house along with his dad, siblings and Mr. McCarsle, who's not related to the family in any way. My friend's family is rich, and I mean really rich. His dad decided to pay for McCarsle's schooling from high school throughout college. Now it all went well, until my friend decided to live abroad, so I decided to move out. McCarsle on the other hand decided to stay there. My friend's sister gave him a job at their business. This is all where it goes to sheet. McCarsole talked to me and my friend, who I had to reiterate, is actually a part of the family, about when we were getting a job. His tone and attitude towards the question just pissed us off. A few months down the line, he keeps complaining about his job and how hard it is and all that crap when the only thing he does is admin work. He then told us that the company is gonna make him a VP. He was so freaking sure of it. The deliberation came, and to no surprise, no one wanted him to become VP. Now this guy is so entitled, he keeps complaining how he doesn't have any money. He has a salary, he gets an allowance from my friend's family, he also gets an allowance from his real family. He's still staying at my friend's house, who's no longer there by the way, and he was lended one of the family's cars. He's complaining about how he has to pay for the gas, when we know full well that it has a company fleet account at a gas slash service provider. The worst thing is that he talks behind our backs. He tells sheety gossips about me and my friends towards my friend's family. What the fuck is that about? Had a girlfriend 
that absolutely wanted me to go to prom with her, but my brother was in the hospital and had an amputated leg. I wanted to get him a prosthetic so he would be able to walk like a normal person again. Now here's the deal. I'm part of a CS, Geo team that competes in local competitions. Now I spot out this competition that has a first place spot that gives enough money for my brother to get a prosthetic. The team make it to the finals and unfortunately, the finals are on the prom day. My girlfriend is asking me why I don't have a dress ready and why I'm always on the computer. I explain to her in the calmest possible manner, but she just flips out and calls me the worst person on earth and that I should go to hell. According to her prom was more important than a brother losing a leg. Thing is, this girl is that one rich kid on campus and has this blog that most people at my college reads. The hour after she leaves my dorm a new blog post appears that basically says how she was abused and what happened behind the scenes in our relationship. She lies and says I hit her on a daily basis. Next day my computer is destroyed. And the day of prom I see this girl with another guy wearing the most expensive sheet. I got revenge against her, but that story is for another time. Now my brother is walking with a crutch and this girl is a drug addict that crashed three cars, one of which not being hers, but of course her parents had her covered. She even attempted to sue me because I apparently caused her so much mental damage that she turned to drugs. Luckily my parents had my back because I couldn't afford a lawyer. Gotta be my father's ex-wife's two teenage daughters. Their dad comes into town every once in a while and buys them a sheet ton of stuff and spends as much money as possible on them and then ditches them for his wife in Vegas. Like the dude has not been any sort of factor in their life other than just their wallet and thanks to him, they got their own credit cards for whenever they wanted to eat out or shop and did I mention they don't work. Anyways when one turned 17 daddy decided to come to town and buy her a brand new 35k decked out in black Ford Fusion I'm talking black rims, illegal window tint and a turbo. The other sister who came along with them after seeing her daddy buy her older sister a brand new car through a temper tantrum and guess what? She ended up getting the same exact car but white with black rims and windows. As a 19 year old it was ridiculous to see my two spoiled as stepsisters with brand new rides and I drove the 97 foot blazer that never quite ran right. Anyways all they've done since with the cars is rack up speeding tickets and drive around drunk but guess who pays those tickets? I always found it ironic when my dad was married to this woman that she preached we were a blended family only to have such big differences in lifestyles between children even though everything is supposed to be fair. Last bit about the beaches, all of their names started with K, were two syllables long and ended with an I. The mom even changed her name just to make them all that way. I called them the KKK, good riddance. My dad's life has never been better without that succubus. A relative. He is 41 years old. He spent 6 years doing visual arts at the most expensive art school in the province, Canada. Didn't graduate. Went into working in a call support center for a communications company. Got a reasonable level. Making decent money. Still heavily supported by parents. Upper upper middle class families all from the 40s and 50s. So we aren't rich. But we have enough money to go around. He has opted to go the US for medical treatments multiple times instead of opting for affordable healthcare in Canada. He guilted his parents into paying for that. One year ago, after the fourth treatment for an illness his parents decided that the age of 40 was long enough to be paying for someone's needlessly international healthcare addiction and cut off money sheet has since hit the fan. He started seeing a shrink and, lo and behold, he suddenly has uncovered repressed memories of being molested physically abused and locked away for weeks at a time as a child. This would be horrifying if he didn't have two entirely normal, successful older siblings who are pretty damn sure it didn't happen. The apartment he lives in was purchased by his parents back when he was in art school. He dumped his ultra long term girlfriend, 12 years, shortly after the money stopped flowing in. Other than the aunt that vocally supports the travel ban, lives in the states. He is the biggest embarrassment to an otherwise normal, happy functional family. I look forward to never seeing his face at family gatherings again. My boyfriend's sister. She has a serious disease that is fatal, but she is mobile and can function. 
As a result of this illness, she uses it as an excuse for people to do everything for her, as well as not get a job and be miserable all the time. My boyfriend's mother is single and widowed, with serious physical and medical issues of her own, and his sister makes her do everything. And because she feels guilty for her, she gives in almost 100% of the time. His sister has horses, and if you don't know anything about horses, all I have to say is they are a fact ton of money and they are pretty much a chore to take care of. So, his sister would make my boyfriend do the horsework every day for her, and if he didn't do it right, she would scream at him and cry to his mother. She would be even worse if she came back from an extended trip or being hospitalized and saw that he didn't do it correctly. She makes her mother cook for her, do her laundry, buy unneeded sheet, and when her and my boyfriend would go to college together, she would leave him there and force his mother to stop everything she was doing and go and get him a 45 minute drive there and back, plus tolls. His sister also doesn't do any physical work, and when other people are doing it, she'll just sit there and nag about how they're not doing it right. My boyfriend told me that once, when they moved to a new house, she sat in the moving truck with a bag of chips and watched everyone move sheet out of the truck while she nagged at them. On top of all of this, she is a pathological liar. She's the scariest person I've ever met. I'm really late to this, so this comment will probably never see the light of day, but my freshman year college roommate at Coo Boulder was the worst. She was from Trumbull, Connecticut, and her dad owned a health insurance company or something. She had gone to a dollar sign 30k a year private school for high school. This was in the early 1990s, mind you, and basically all she'd learned was how to get as faked up as possible while still attending classes. So she was in the mountains, and she wanted a car for the mountains. Her dad sent her a brochure for a Subaru Outback, I think. It was a nice, rugged car, whatever it was. She flipped out, called up her dad and was screaming, literally screaming, into the phone. What the fuck is this? I asked for a truck for the mountains, and this is what you send me? Are you faking stupid? I am not getting this car. Fuck you. Slams down the phone. Goes over to her bed, flops down on it, and starts busily flipping through the Victoria's Secret catalog with the phone in her hand. I was like, ah, uh, what are you doing? And she says, in the beachiest, most spoiled little sheet way, charging. She proceeds to charge hundreds of dollars worth of sheet from VS to her card, to get back at her dad. He bought her a Pathfinder. Middle Americans who are SOO forgotten and disenfranchised, that they would admit in interviews that they would vote for someone they didn't like, Trump, simply because they knew he'd throw a wrench into things. They were literally willing to sink the whole ship, as long as it meant shaking things up. Their lives were so horrible living in a first world country with their smokes and their freedom of speech and their emergency responders and their free education and their clean drinking water, not you. Flint, that they never stop to consider that their quality of life is better than that of 90% of the world's population. I just can't believe someone would think living in the greatest country on earth is so lame. Even our poorest are better off than 9 tenths of the world. Do you know how many people are living in war zones right now? And have been for years. When's the last time you had to carry a 5 gallon bucket of water a few miles every day just to survive? North Korean Redditors, chime in here.